team should have been par fives. Emotionally, they are par fives. But according to the caddy... Uh, good afternoon, everybody. This is Jim Oates. And uh, we are here this afternoon in uh, PEI, Prince Edward's Island, uh, to enjoy the 2023 Dynamic Dismania. There's Jim's first flub. All righty. <laughs> okay, Dismania open, yeah? And we're waiting for the lead card to tee off right now. And we're also waiting for Brian to join us. So if Brian's watching the broadcast, perhaps he could jump on at any time. Check, check, check. Anybody out there hear me? I can hear you. Okay, I see Jim's mouth moving. Let's... Well, there's a little bit of a tailwind today. Uh, most of the players practice. The wind normally comes from the northeast. Today it's coming from the uh, southwest. So it's a bit of a tailwind. They're probably changing their discs to a little bit less stable and trying to stay in the middle of the fairway. Oh, he still went big hyzer. Nice. Well placed. There is a small plateau that most of the players try to get to, which is about halfway up the fairway. You can see those yellow flowers on the right of the screen here. About halfway up those, there's a nice little flat spot right in front of the catch cam for them to land and make their second approach shot for the birdie. Your card, Mr. Thomas Gilbert.
as the players make their way down on hole one. Uh, it looked like Eagle might have been the only one that got up to the plateau. The other three look like they landed. They'll have a little bit of an uphill lie. Um, it plays uh, about 240 to 250 from that range uh, with a 40 to 40 foot upgrade uh, to the basket. Uh, the green is relatively good sized. It's uh, 32 feet out the back. To the left, they have 29 feet. And to the right, they have 41 feet. Um, with the wind coming from the back, uh, it will probably knock their shots down. So they'll all be trying to move the disc as high as they can uh, to get it to carry left to the basket, I would think, all being right-handed. Oh, that was well played. Well played. Also played very well up the hill. Sleed card seems to be making a easy work so far of the first goal. Looking at birdies. Hey, Brian, why don't you come on in and join me? The weather's great. Well, Jim, it's been great to be back. Some technical difficulties. Uh, Happy to be here on a beautiful day in Prince Edward Island. Thomas Gilbert on one. Thomas wanted me to give a shout out to his mom, Susan. Uh, they're up at the family cabin. And uh, he just uh, wanted to give a shout out to his mom, making the lead card here. The Canadian's best right here, uh, showing off his talents. And we've been seeing it from the women in the morning, but talk about the uphill downhill slopes out here. I mean, it's been pretty tough to watch. It's hard to see the players throw such short distances up such steep slopes. Well, I think, you know, Ben Smith, the designer of the course, uh, did a great job using the terrain that he had, um, creating, you know, 95 foot wide fairways with hazards on both sides. Um, using the change of elevation, trying to get players to, you'll see throughout the course, even in through the wooded parts where he's trying to get the players to use every, other discs, I guess is the best way to put it. Throw your mid range, use your putter, maybe go short off the tee and then go long. We're going to see all kinds of different uh, techniques that we don't normally see from uh, our big throwers who just go after the course with huge throws. And it's quite the challenge from a course design standpoint to get players to stray away from the same two, three molds that they can rely on on most of these courses. So looking forward to see how it plays out. Now Gilbert. Not going to work there for Gilbert. First start from the hazard there for Thomas. Now McMahon for a nice birdie here on one. Beautiful. Well done. Man, 
And just a timid miss for Gilbert on that weak side. Now a bogey. Got it. Hopefully shaking off a little bit of the nerves. Now Babcock for a nice birdie. Very timid. Well, I think he maybe he was a little bit quick there. Maybe he needs to slow down a little bit on that backswing. Get himself into position a little bit better on those short putts. And your world champion. Smooth as silk. This I love this guy's game. Looking forward to seeing many more spin putts throughout the course of the weekend out here at Prince Edward Island. Let's take a look at the UDIS course close-up. Jim, walk us through this beautiful Rose Valley course. Well, the Rose Valley course here in PE is just a beautiful property. It's uh, 87 acres. Uh, used to be a brewery with hop farms. Um, the uh, five owners that are in on the property, uh, Don was the original owner and he brought in four other guys. They opened the course and they bought the property in 2018. Um, and then they, uh, opened in November of 2019. And you can see the devastation that happened last September, right at the end of the month. These poor folks had to go 14 days without any electricity, surviving in their homes with wood stoves. Uh, to hear them tell the stories is amazing. And then they've worked so hard this last year to get this course back open. They barely got it open this last week. Um, and. Uh, they had a lot of problems. They had the, on top of the hurricane, this year was their largest rain this year. So every time they brought out heavy equipment, they were stalled. Uh, it was quite a lot of work for them to just mulch up what they could, cut down what they could, pull out of the way with dozers what they could. And I think they've done a magnificent job to make this available for the players this weekend. Couldn't say it any better myself. Eagle McMahon on two. This is a good little hole. It's 385 feet. It's a par three island hole. It's 233 to the front where you see that little light, uh, the uh, light tower there. Um, and uh, it's only 70 to 75 feet wide. Uh, the pin is set all the way in the back about 25 feet from the back you got 41 feet on the left and 31 on the right uh it's not really windy today uh but it is going to be tough to judge that tailwind to make sure you keep those inbound and after eagle puts one inside circle one isaac leaks one a little bit left not a strong effort on the hyzer Still waiting to see a result from the spotter. Now Gavin. Perfect. Beautiful shot. It is funny sometimes throwing that stock hyzer out in the field with nothing in the background can pose its own challenge. No reference points really. Come on, get a little lift there. That's nice, stay in bounds. Okay, that should be okay. That should be okay. And after the confirmation OB for Isaac Robinson, but doesn't matter, got himself a pretty nice major title under his belt last week at the World Championships. Let's relive that wonderful moment. You said you love Isaac. Talk about his game, talk about what impresses you, Jim. Well, you know, what I really like about his game is his smooth touch. He just, no matter what the distance is, it always seems like his range is so good. You know what I mean? He's not flying by baskets. He's playing up to baskets. 
He's disking down and playing in front of the hole. You know, he's not out there to put on a great show. He's there to um, produce low scores and have less errors. Uh, of course, he just had an error on the last one, but a lot of that has to do with the wind. And, uh, you know, things happen, it's golf. We play with round discs, so we'll have to just live with some things. And uh, he clearly did it better than everybody else in the entire world last week. What a week for Isaac Robinson. And I have to agree with you, Jim. It's it's the touch mixed with the unique lines that he chooses to take. Sometimes he's challenging these ceilings with these crazy you know, nose down hyzer flips. It's just such an idiosyncratic style. And then this spin putt is just. Yeah, he's about 130 on the drop zone. Look at that. It's just. Had a chance to go in, but doesn't leave the basket. Gotta love that. And the speed was good. Drop in there for Isaac. Definitely going to learn his lesson on that one. It's been quite the year for him so far. Two major titles under his belt. He seems to show up when it matters most. And I think a lot of people were saying for a long time that they knew he was good. But I don't know if a lot of people knew he was going to be this good. And it is impressive to watch. In that last little clip, you saw his dad. What a proud papa. Two boys that he raised playing golf. And they're just thriving, both of them. And McMahon, another young superstar that's grown into his own, dropping in the birdie on two. It's been... You know, McMahon is one of those guys I love watching because, like Simon, some of the other guys, he could really break a course. You know, yes. uh, tournament uh, designers work so hard to try to figure out the math problem. Guys hung up and... Uh, these guys just keep coming up with better and better shots and better and better strategies and plans to the to take apart their their you know mad scientist designs. Yes. Yeah. And as these players tap out on number two, we're gonna take a quick commercial break here on the Disc Golf Network. We will see you on the other side. One of my favorite memories growing up was a trip I took with my dad to Hawaii. We just got done with a round of disc golf and decided to listen to the Grateful Dead. Without saying anything, we both knew we needed to dance, and that's exactly what we did. Sometimes you just need to stop and enjoy the music. An important part of getting a PDJ membership is helping grow the game. Membership dollars are used to bolster competition of all levels, from local C tiers to majors. Tools like Digital Scorecard and Tournament Manager help events run seamlessly. Your PDJ membership also gives you access to Disc Golf Network coverage for select events and a 50% discount to their full coverage package. Help grow the sport and get started today. Visit pdj.com slash join.
Welcome back. If you're watching on YouTube, today's free coverage on YouTube is brought to you by the Disc Golf Network. And if you're looking to finish out this weekend on the Disc Golf Network and even see the beginning of the MVP Open next week at Maple Hill, scan the QR code below or hit the link in the description for a free seven-day trial of the network. You will not regret it. Rest of this tournament and the beginning of the MVP Open at Maple Hill. Some fantastic golf coming up on this final stretch of the tour. And now we are back with Eagle McMahon. This is hole three. It's a 440-foot shot that's down 65 feet. It's a par three. Most of these guys, they can't quite get over the tree line, which is at 383. It's a little bit of a dangerous to try to drop in there. So they'll be trying to slam through this tree line right here. The basket sits about somewhere between 80 and 120 feet down the hill, another 25 feet. So uh, it's possible to go over the top, but I don't think we're going to see very many people try it. I think it's a much better shot to blast through the trees. There's no OB on this hole. So these guys are just going to be trying to rip through it. Oh, look at that one go down there. Babcock from circle two, look for birdie. We saw Eagle just previously go with a power roller. Is that a, is that a line we're going to see too often, Jim? Well, not out here because you're not going to have the terrain to throw rollers. But on this hole, I think what he's trying to do is have the least amount of mass going through the mm -hmm. uh, trees. So he wants them to be standing up. Anything that rolls down that hill is could hopefully wind up on the path instead of scooting into the bushes because the roller might get hung up. Now this is our third different line in the hole. Gilbert goes with a low screamer of a forehand. Yeah, I don't think he cleared the hill there, yeah. Brian. It's going to be a tough look. It just depends on where he wound up there. There are some openings, but like I said, you're playing downhill. You're, it's about probably 120 feet from there for him uh, on a directly downhill shot. This one's kind of tailing a little bit left. Yeah, oh, Isaac. It did squeak through a little bit, though. Yeah. I think he was looking for a little more turn there. Let's take another look at this shot from Gavin Babcock, just showing how impressive it truly is. You look at the rest of the card. Wow, look at that sneaky little thing. <laughs> Looks like he had the cloaking device working on that one. Must have clearly been working. What a shot. Now looking at a birdie from 55. Starts flattening and flying. The wind is ripping out Oh, yeah, out there. he's going to be a little bit more than 120. I would say he's probably 140, and he's completely blind right now. He's just picking a spot, letting it try to cruise down there. Daunting shot with the branches blowing in the back. Yeah, and he's probably got a little bit of a left to right wind, maybe a little bit of a tailwind from this angle. It's probably a little bit more left to right, though. Uh-oh, he clipped those branches. I think he caught that tailwind, like yeah. you were saying. That's all right. He has what looks like just outside circle one downhill putt, though. So he does have an opportunity there. I'd like to see him start picking up the speed here. And it seems like these little mistakes have been the bane of Thomas Gilbert's existence since he hit the Disc Golf Pro Tour. I mean, you watch him throw the disc, and instantly you think top player, and you look at some of the putting stats and some of the scramble stats and re that right there, the few strokes around that prevent Thomas from consistently getting up there for the, the victory. Uh, like I, I would, yeah. I would agree with that. He is young. Um, part of the growth of the game is the maturity and the patience to make mistakes and learn from them. So uh, at his age, you know, I, I think he's going to be okay. He's already won the Western Canadian Championships, um, the Nationals. Oh, that's a nice little sidearm out. Did anybody get that on tape? Because he doesn't throw many sidearms. 
Scratch that one off the bingo sheet. Yeah, we might have to. That might be the hot shot of the day or something right there. Here, and then, Gavin, you're like down over here. Oh, I love spotters. Man, they're so helpful. They are so helpful. Especially on a course like this. I mean, to get the volunteers to come out here and spot, obviously, it's a beautiful place to do it. But, man, some of these courses, it would just be really tough to, to play without them. Well, I think also... You know, we we play on Thursdays and Fridays. Those are the toughest days to get out volunteers. Um, hopefully over the weekend there will be a few more. This is a course that uh, you definitely want to keep your eye on your desk. Okay, here we go. Babcock. Great birdie look here from C2. All right. I think people, you notice there, he, he was kind of looking down at his feet. I think there's going to be a lot of that this, this weekend uh, where you're out away from you. There's lots of um, bark and chips and uneven ground that these guys are going to be working with all weekend. <laughs> Eagle almost dunking one in from the, the rough on the right side. I kind of understand the roller play from Eagle. Him just saying the tree line seems a little, not fluky, but he feels like he could roll the dice with the roller and sneak through. Yeah, and then once you get first those first initial trees where you saw where those people were standing on the uh, when we were at the other angle, you could see the path comes right down to the basket. Exactly. So a roller, a cut, you know, that comes down and cuts over, that, that's actually a pretty smart play, I think, especially with the tailwind. Gilbert for par. Yes. There you go. Showing up. Well done. Good par save there for Thomas Gilbert. Now Robinson's par. And the sidearm works. It saves par. Ed Hedricks made those baskets just <laughs> big enough, didn't he? Squeaks it in on that strong side. A par is a par. And now that you mention it, it is a pretty rare sight to see an Isaac Robinson sidearm. Again, collect this moment, folks. Not too shabby. Not too bad. It's kind of like that Clint Eastwood movie where he says that, you know, or or actually it's Quigley Down Under, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, 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 with that, Jim, we got to take a look at Oats Notes brought to you by BlackInkDisc.com. What are your notes to success on this course? Well, first off, you got to pack a lunch because this course is going to play a little bit over three hours, but it's going to be an aerobic workout up and down these hills. It only plays 900 and 9,455 feet, but there's rough all over this course that's gonna cause a lot of problems. You will have to keep your eye on your disc uh, and help your card mates, or we're gonna be here all day. Be humble, lay up, lay out. Don't be a hero, that could get you in big trouble out here. Uh, bogey free is probably pretty unlikely. Uh, we got one guy out there right now doing it, and that's about it. And uh, be patient. There's going to be a lot of shot shaping around the greens uh, and on your up shots. There's going to be some rough footing all day. Uh, so uh, lots of standstill shots probably this weekend. So the guys with those skills are going to really pay it. It's really going to pay off for them. Oats Notes brought to you by BlackIngDisc.com, the premium disc golf store. Now up to hole number four, Gavin Babcock. Tight staggered gap off the tee. It, it is a tight gap, Brian. It's, it's probably about 29 feet wide right there. And it's the guys are going to be looking to play the disc about 
115 feet to maybe 160 feet off the tee, I think most guys are going to try to go over. You know, working your way down to that gap, it's 369 feet to that gap down there, and it's only about 25 or 30 feet wide. You see how he's playing that short shot right there? And with the wind the way it's blowing, you can just get it up over those trees and look to crash on the other side. Uh, that's probably the best way they're going to get a par. Going all the way down there to that gap on this hole uh, is could turn out to be a very, very tough shot. He's going all the way down. Let's hope he sits into a nice spot. That's a tight, staggered window. Uh, lots of trees through there, Brian. Lots of trees. And it probably plays about... I don't know, 316 or so back to the basket from down there. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how guys try to dissect this hole this weekend. Well, I was, I was thinking about that as well. I mean, you have a hole here where the opening tee shot is not long. It's almost like that reverse par four where in there mm -hmm. that goes down into a Creek bed down there. And if you can get down into there, it's, uh, it's still a tough shot to get up and down, but, uh, he obviously does not have the room to he's going to do a standstill so doesn't have the room to go over that's 500 feet and just a screamer of a forehand from babcock oh my gosh that is amazing it almost got up to where the you could see the edge of the women's circle right there he's going to have a Pretty decent up from there. That is a fantastic shot. And Way this to is go, a Babcock. This is a player that you know Gannon Burr and a few other players have said has one of the sneakiest, most underrated sidearms on the entire tour. And that shot right there. Well, that. if you've ever met the man, he's a beast. He's <laughs> an ex wrestler. He's strong. He's really developing his game, and uh, he works very hard at it. Um, and uh, he's eager to learn and. Uh, much like Thomas, I think his future is also very bright. And it's nice that we get to see these players that may be on the fourth or fifth card when we have the regular tour. And up here, they're, they're, they get an opportunity to shine for the people to see out there. That's awesome. McMahon's second. He is going over the tree line. Oh, yeah. This is, this is, this is the shot for the big arms. Oh, my. Catch cam better be ready. Sharp. Okay. As you can see, the hurricane left a little mark right there, yeah, so like he'll it. be playing out of that, but he should be able to figure out some kind of a shot to wiggle himself over next to the basket. And that'll certainly be something for him. Gilbert obviously going to do the same thing. Yeah, I think Gilbert kind of played a little bit more to the right to try to get over these lower trees and bring it back to the left. Uh, over to the left, you can't totally see it, but you can see the tip tops of some pines off to the left side there. Uh, the logo is kind of in the way there, uh, his stats. But yeah, he wants to pull that left. See those top pine trees? That's kind of where he wants to crash in. Uh, looks like the same area as Eagle. Same area. That one might be a little deeper. He might have to be a little bit more crafty, but. I think that's uh, like circle two, right? Yep. Good call, Thomas. Probably circle two. It's a nice risk to take. I mean, obviously, it's it's very much in the cards to put one down to where they're walking now. Yeah, uh, but getting up and down for a birdie opportunity, mm -hmm. uh, this is a tough hole to get a birdie on to be totally honest with you. Um, birdies on this hole uh, are going to be few and far between. We're probably going to see more pars and uh, bogeys than we will anything else. Well, this is a solid position for Robinson to do this. Sounded like he clipped something. And just like you said, tough gap, tough footing, little downhill run up. Yeah, he did put himself in a really, really good spot, though. 
Well, as they walk up the fairway, Aiden Scott, your leader right now, four under, just took a rough bogey on the 14th, but solid round so far. Jim, I want to ask you, is four under going to be a solid score, you think, after seeing the players go through here? Well, I'm thinking six to eight um, for most of your top players is probably where if you asked them before they started their round, they would tell you that they were shooting for a seven or a six mm -hmm. or a eight or something like that, somewhere in that. But there we do have, as I talked about before, a course buster, and that's Eagle. So we'll keep an eye on him throughout the day. I could see Eagle maybe getting to nine or 10, but the bogeys and staying out of trouble here is really the toughest part. Oh, he clipped a tree. He had an opening there. Oh, he's going to be frustrated with that shot. Unforced error for Babcock. Yeah. Yeah. And now Alden Harris on the six. Little flex shot. That was his third shot from there. Okay. Okay. He had a little trouble getting through on that one. That second shot must have got hung up. And solid shot there. Yeah. Bullseye look. That's what I like about this guy. He's methodical. He doesn't panic. He plays the course and the shots that are in front of him. You know, I've noticed the same thing, Jim. You know, you interview him after an average round, you interview him after a course record, and it seems like his attitude towards the game is very similar. Very even keel. Very focused. Yeah, look at that steady glare. <laughs> Didn't let the camera bother him. He's, he must be a world champion. <laughs> he must, must be someone who gets on these camera cards quite often. You know, becoming a world champion could be kind of tough, though, because you go back home and you play and your buddy, you know, your 840 buddy gets the tee from you and he takes a moment to point it out to everybody standing there that he took the tee from the world champ. And he will be going back to North Georgia at some point this winter. Oh, yeah. They, the league there is just salivating for him <laughs> to come back. Looking to make themselves a name locally. Now we got Gilbert off in the rough on the right side. Like you said, a little bit worse off than Eagle. Yeah, let's hope he has a little window here. You know, I guess this is the risk you take when you do go over the top. Where's our catch guy? How come he's not in there? <laughs> Just kidding. I think it's a little thick. <laughs> I think it's one of those lies. You're shocked your, your disc even got in there. Well, I'm glad he found it. He rips a forehand. Oh, oh look at that. my Unbelievable. gosh. Unbelievable. Okay. That... <laughs> Thomas has got to love that. And now McMahon from a much He's better a little lie. Bit more of a window than I thought, but this is what we talked about earlier, Brian, the shot shaping that's going to be necessary around these greens. You can see all the trees. You can see the down trees that they tried to move. It's, it's pretty crazy. These guys are going to have to work all weekend long. Look at this. Oh, oh. Eagle will not let us down, I'm sure, all day. Long run there from 90. It's going to be a tap in. Now Babcock, long par look from outside of circle two or at least the edge. Yeah. Got oh, it. Oh, hello. No pitchers on the scorecard. That is a par. Oh, I loved it. <laughs> Did you hear that? Oh, oh fans at home, you got to love it when the camera picks up the voice of the player. You know what? It's funny. You make such a foolish mistake after such a beautiful sidearm. You kind of have to grab the par at that point. What a shot. Well, that's a pick me up for that young man right there. You know? Isaac is going to tap in par. And 
par for Gilbert after a phenomenal scramble from the woods. And Eagle will do the same. Up ahead to Alden Harris. This is for par. It's been a pretty steady day for Alden. Birdie on one. Par's out so far. Now Jake Wolf for Bird. Oh, nicely done. And that brings Jake Wolf into a tie for third place. We got to watch a lot of Jake Wolf at the AFDO. Absolutely demolishing tomahawks all over the course. Looking forward to seeing more from Jake this week. He has been all over the map this year. It'll, it'll be interesting to see how did he play hole six? Yeah, that's that that that's the okay, question and that then I there's, asked. There's hole 14 too. That's going to be where he could lay up near the root ball. We'll see that later, and then go over the top with that hook thumber, and or tomahawk. I would love to see if he could pull a birdie off there. That is a tough. That is one of the two toughest par fours on the course, 14 and 16. So looking forward to that. You know, it seems like courses that have holes that are very challenging somehow suit his play style very well. But now we jump ahead, Eagle McMahon. This this is a this is a tough par three. It's 419 feet up this hill. You can kind of see where the catch guy is in the middle of your screen there. You want to push up that way, which is around 400 feet, and let it glide a little right to get back into the tree line. It's about 51 feet back in there. If you pull this right into those right-hand trees, it's probably a bogey. Uh, if you go a little left, you could probably get out of trouble over there and get up and down like that one there. He's going to have to do a little work across the fairway. But if this gap is deceiving, it is. It's a. It's about 30 feet between the trees. But the trees, when you line up and look at them, they're only about six feet apart right here. So this first tree and those tree, those four you see right mm -hmm. there are only six feet wide. Even though there's a 30 foot gap there, that is a, mm -hmm. for a sidearm, it's a wicked window. Yeah, he, he let that go a little early, I think. Oh, get up there. Oh my goodness, that's, that'll be okay. That'll be okay. Hugging on that right side with a blast of a forehand. That was pretty awesome. I was kind of surprised the Eagle didn't go to that sidearm, but it is a, a very hard throw for the sidearm. Exactly. He may be staying away from that still. Now Gilbert going to the sidearm as well. Yep. Turn a little more. Mm, that could be okay. trouble off to the right side. Just yeah, he might have to reverse pivot from there and uh, try to get something to carry through those tree that tree line. That could be a tough shot for him. Robinson, backhand. Yeah, that's just steady as you go. I think there's going to be other parts of the course that are going to be really good for Isaac. He seems to just be kind of trying to cruise through the front, um, not do anything crazy. Yeah, I feel He'd like be he's... one under if he didn't slip out on that um, island hole. So, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think that was the shot from a player betting against the field, but <laughs> now up ahead to Jake Wolf, who is not betting against the field. He's in his own lane here. I love this hole. You get two choices up the middle. Oh, look at that. It's just a fastball, Jim. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. I love that. Yeah. And he's going to be up the fairway as our feature card moves up. Well, he's going to be a long way from the hole. That's way up that hill, uh, hole seven. Shout out to the Flight Factory for the beautiful drone flyover. Just a beautiful terrain, beautiful property in general here at Rose Valley. And like you said, Jim, there's a small group of passionate people working out here. Just we have to take a moment to, to really appreciate the people on the ground floor taking care of these courses. 
out of the goodness of their own heart and passion for this game. You know, Pat is one of the owners. He's out here all the time working on the course with the, some of the other owners and some a small handful of volunteers. Uh, ben does a lot of the coordination to get the heavy equipment to to really plan out this course. And yes, they they really work hard at this course and over at the the Hillcrest course. They the uh, Best family has really done a wonderful job to get that course. Uh, up and moving again. They weren't able to get the gold course that John Houck designed uh, open yet, but they did get uh, the blue and the red for the locals. Uh, they just opened last week. So um, these guys have been really been working hard uh, here to do this. This is a big thing for them mm-hmm. having a silver event here. They're very proud uh, people here that are, have worked very hard to do what they can. And I'm glad the pros that did make the the uh, trip up here made it. Um, uh, ben even went out of the out of his way to get some travel vouchers for many of the players so they could have a free place to stay right along the water. Um, it's it's just a, a wonderful wonderful place to come uh, enjoy their food and their culture here. It's fantastic. It's just always nice to honor people like that, putting up so much of their time to just keep this game going. And last silver event, we honored Jim Palmieri and everything that he did for the sport of disc golf. And it's been nice to highlight some of those people that have done so much. Now, Gilbert. Tough second. Well, at least he was able to stand without having to do a reverse to get around that tree. Looked like he got it up there pretty good inside circle one. McMahon pin high. Just a long putt here. Yeah. Oh, well done again. That looked like it went in the bullseye, didn't it, Brian? Oh, yeah. Nice and easy. Yeah. And what's not going to be nice and easy is how powerful this forehand is from Wolf. Oh, my goodness. It's 309 (laughs) or so from where he is doing a standstill just to the top of the hill. And he went up over those trees. So he should have a long approach shot into the green. It's about... uh, I don't know, about 60 feet wide up there. Um, and uh, there's no OB, so he should be able to get up and down, I would think, for his par on that hole. Robinson just going to leak it on the weak side. No problems there. And now Babcock, after a 400-foot uphill forehand. That was crazy. He really cut that corner, didn't he? Oh, my goodness. I think you and I both thought he was fading into the woods on the right. I did. I thought he came out early, but, you know, with his power, um, that disc must have just straightened right up where we couldn't see it. It's just a beautiful thing. Now, now come on. What a birdie. Bravo, bravo. Babcock working hard for the money out here. He's 200 through five. And he's come a long way from missing that first little birdie putt, hasn't he? Yeah. He's really banging away. Gilbert going to tap in par. Eagle about to do the same. And as Eagle taps out, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. You won't miss a thing. One thing we all love about disc golf is it's a lifetime sport. Whether you play pro, am, juniors, or senior grandmasters, we all want to play this sport as much as we want and for as long as we want. This can introduce wear over time, potentially hindering your ability to continue playing. A cart reduces the cumulative stress on your body that comes with repetitive motions, such as reaching down and lifting. This will help keep you on the course, maximizing your athletic potential, and playing your best. There's something about sand that reminds us of ourselves. 
What were once great stones have been ground down over years and years into something so small. But sand also shows us that everything we do matters, and that together, even our smallest actions can create great dooms. Because little by little, a little becomes a lot. I want to be known for, I guess, like the titles I win, and I want to be known for winning a lot of tournaments. And, uh, you know, hopefully I get to a point where I can be dominant in an era. But uh, with so many people coming up in the game, so hard to stay consistent at the top. You know, we haven't really seen that in a long time. So yeah, that's kind of my goal is to set the new standard for this generation. Shot by Simon. What a veteran play by Simon. Beautiful putt. Great putt. I'm blown away. Your champion at the Great Lakes Open, Simon Lazat. And welcome back. A little bit of a backup here, but not too shabby of a place to have a backup. Jim, you've been here on the ground. What do you? Uh, what have you been seeing? sights and sounds out here at the course well it's beautiful the nature is beautiful they have these big huge yellow spiders i don't know if they've been able to get a picture of one yet the camera guys probably have seen them they're massive you would think they're poisonous but they're not oh we got alden for birdie he's on seven isn't he oh yeah oh wow i would have loved to have seen that drive and that would have been his second shot got to there. He's this Jake's probably going over for a par. Yeah. You think he'll tomahawk this one? <laughs> you know, we can only hope, Jim, but we'll have to take a look back in a little bit. Now we got Gavin Babcock back He's on, on six. six. Yeah, I see those double trees down there in the middle of the screen down there a little ways. Mm -hmm. Those are about 324 feet away. These guys are going to be trying to go around those maybe 80 to 120 feet around those trees and come down into the opening to get them into the gap. See, that's very, very nice. That's yeah, very nice. There's, there's a tree off to the left. There's, well too fast for me to get to him but there's a bushy tree in the middle that's about 300 he went by that looked like about 100 feet and then the big tree in the middle uh that we saw earlier where uh, alden was that's about 171 feet from the basket so that was an excellent drive he's in a great opportunity for a birdie now eagle going with the backhand turnover here oh yeah break the course eagle this could be, oh, get out. Oh, that might be trouble. It's pretty rough on both sides, Brian. It slopes down the hill quite a bit on this hole. Um, and uh, 
it goes into rough on the left and you have to play around the rough on the right. So uh, going over the top there is kind of risky, especially with uh, his kind of power. Mm -hmm. He could play down to the bottom of the hill and probably get a better opportunity as a, from a birdie aspect, I would think. But uh, you know, you love it when he tries to break the course. Gilbert forehand, huge shot. Also went into the shul on the right. See, if down where you saw that open grass, if these guys lay back a little bit. We talked about it earlier. You know, going for the hero shot sometimes can cost you on this course. Uh, being humble and taking the, the smooth shot like this. Look at this. This... Get by that. Look at this, right by the 300 foot. If he stayed out on the edge, he should be able to go straight by that big tree we talked about, Brian. That's 70, 171. And now Wolf has finally got to his lie. No tomahawk here, Jim. Just a standard <laughs> straddle putt from the knee gets oh, it. Oh, solid. Oh, look out. See what we <laughs> talked about earlier? The stances these guys are gonna have to take. Oh my goodness. Now, Jim, okay. our lead card has teed off on six. Let's walk through it. Okay, it's a 639 foot par four. The landing zone is about 80 to 120 feet down and right of these two double trees, which is 324 feet off of the, uh, off the tee. And then as you come around this corner, you see these bushy trees? They play about 300 feet from the hole. You can see the basket back there past that big tree in the middle. That tree's 171 feet. You can see where Eagle and them went off to the right there. And the other two guys are down here in this opening. This opening is only about 44 feet across right there. And it's only about 29 feet past the basket. So anything drifting right or left, you can wind up in the shul and not get that nice putt. But a nice, straight, slow disc. You won't have any problems on this hole. I think it's a good opportunity for a birdie. Uh, some of the par fours out here are very gettable. A couple of them are not very gettable. And when we get to those, we're going to enjoy watching those. Feature card walking down the fairway. Oh, this is Top. a beautiful shot, isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. And I was saying this morning, you know, it's so nice to fly over something like this and to realize that this is all just disc golf land. Yeah, and you see the guys going up on the left side of your screen there, walking up seven. You know, this is great. Oh, okay, he's gonna go to the reverse pivot. And this is tough with that uh, right foot being lower than his left. I don't know, he'll be able to get his weight out front. It'll just be him having to be able to hold that left foot long enough and not push away from it uh, for the footfall. So that'll be the key to this shot. But he looks like he, he's got some room. You can barely see the basket. Oh, he threw a roller. What a crafty dude. This is great. Oh, wow. This is great. Okay. that I love it when you're watching at home and the guy surprises you with something. You know what I mean? I mean, I oh, didn't definitely. see that coming. Did you see that coming? You don't see too many quick flip, like mid-range rollers to begin with. That was yeah, a good that was, shot. That was well played. You know, that comes from having a dad that's an old school golfer. <laughs> exactly. Right there. exactly. That right there, dad, dad did that shot for him. Now we got Isaac Robinson lining up after a really clean turnover shot. Yeah, that and look how well placed he is. This big tree to the right, mm -hmm. right here, 171 feet. So we're looking maybe 190 straight in at the hole. Very well played. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's golf. I'd like to circle it for him right now, but we're going to go ahead and let him putt out. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. Nice shot there from Isaac. A couple of simple shots for him. 
And I have to think Eagle's backhand turnover must have been him trying to attack the green at some point. Oh, yeah. I think what guys are trying to do there is get past that big tree, the exactly. 171, get into the meadow and possibly toss in an eagle. Because this is just one of those holes where, you know, it's pot. I mean, he was in, in trouble and he still got out of it and managed to have a birdie opportunity. So the risk reward for him going over the top isn't as large as what it looked like when it first landed because of the way he got out of the trouble. Mm -hmm. um, he's a great scrambler. That's why he's Eagle McMahon. <laughs> um, and uh, so uh, maybe tomorrow, uh, if the wind's blowing in the regular direction, we may see that shot flex all the way past that and into that meadow right there. And we could see a run at an eagle uh, tomorrow on that hole. If he Bab makes lead card. <laughs> Babcock with a nice forehand there. Now back to Thomas Gilbert forehand as well. Oh, a little army golfer Thomas on that one. From the rough to the rough. It's going to be a tough lie there for yeah. Gilbert. I almost would have liked to see him try a turnover shot there mm -hmm. just so it would flex left and give him some kind of opportunity. Oh, look at this little flippy sidearm on eight. I sound like a hit enough. It didn't wow. sound like the ace we heard this morning from that young lady, though, did it? Was not an ace. <laughs> Congratulations again to Isabel Burke. That was incredible. But I'll take a quick flip forehand turnover as well. Nice shot yeah, there for it, Jake. On that hole, hole eight, it is easier to kind of come in from the left, Brian. So those little flip uh, side arms that mm -hmm. Heiser back late, uh, there's some openings over there where the righty has to kind of flip up a hyzer on that hole and if it drifts too far right there's a lot of uh, blockage there so it can be tough to get in this morning we saw that young lady throw a low shot that flipped up and took a skip and went into the hole uh, so very very exciting for her maybe we can roll that it would be fun to see that <laughs> if any no one saw that this morning that was a lot of fun no catch cam so don't get too upset <laughs> and now we got Thomas Gilbert lining up. Tough lie. It is. We're going to see many of our golfers in this situation all weekend long. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Close. that was a good bid. Definitely a good bid. Going to be a tap in par for Gilbert. He's going to remain at even. Now Eagle McMahon for birdie. Nice. What a scramble. Unbelievable. Boy, so it's easy to say he's going to go with that shot again tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Safe to say. Yeah. I mean, if he would have gotten a little bit more trouble, he might have changed his shot tomorrow, but I could see him trying that again tomorrow. Now we got Babcock for birdie. Oh, oh. Not going to stick on that strong side. He's a little baffled. Oh, that was tough. A little bit too much speed on that low right side. Um, it's hard to change your speed, not knowing where you're going to hit. You know, he's trying to hit the middle. It's a good putt, a solid putt. Just sometimes, sometimes now, they flip right out eight. like that. Oh, is that where his... 
That is where Jake Wolf's drive landed park job. Nice. But Jake, sorry, buddy. Birdie's good, but you're not going to be like Isabel Burke this morning. Hole number eight, FPO action. Heard the chain. Yeah. Her Isabel's, reaction was priceless. Isabel's first ever ace, period. And it's on the Disc Golf Network. None of the rest of your round matters, Isabel. You got the ace on the Disc Golf Network. Congratulations. We will see you tomorrow morning. What a shot. And for more aces like that, make sure to scan the QR code in the bottom left corner for more disc golf action. A seven-day free trial of the Disc Golf Network. Catch the rest of this weekend. Also, the beginning of the MVP Open at Maple Hill. Not to mention all the archives you could check out all week long leading up to the event. There's so much content now that uh, Joe Mez is a part of the Disc Golf Network. Uh, there is just so much content that you can rifle through and really enjoy seven days and see why it's worth purchasing and supporting the Disc Golf Network throughout the year. It's certainly going to be a exciting finishing stretch of the year. Well, I, I really like this hole. Ben giving two place, two opportunities for the guys to come out and get up on the side of that hill. Um, you have your tight down the middle uh, window, which is only about two paces wide. And it's about 151 feet to that straight out there. Uh, but And it's only a couple paces wide. Oh, he pulled it a little right and he's still gonna go through, but he might get to those trees. That can make it tough. If you go out to the right on the hyzer window, um, it can drift right into those trees. You really have to pull your hyzer. Like if you go through this, you can see Thomas looking mm -hmm. through that window. He has really got to play that high and tight to get it back into the fairway. Otherwise, you can see those trees in the distance. He winds up in those, and he's going to have a tough time getting a par. Oh, he went inside. Boy, these Man. guys got the cloaking device working today, <laughs> huh? Was, I was going to say, he's going to have to take that one. Lots of little gaps. I understand DGN has a cloaking device for sale <laughs> on their website for three easy payments of nineteen ninety five. <laughs> no QR code for that, Jim. No QR code. You just got to check with Jeff Spring. Send him an email. <laughs> now, Jake Wolf up ahead on nine. Big tomahawk. And as Alden takes the tee, we're going to take a quick look at the scoreboard. Aiden Scott still holding strong at that four under mark. Yeah, uh, he picked Jim, up another bogey and a birdie. Are yeah. you surprised to see that? It's still the hot round so far. No, and I'm not surprised to see so much color. You know, we talked about this earlier. It would be, it would really be a shock. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if someone made it through this course bogey free. Uh, but it, I would be very impressed. I mean, these guys are great players, so it's possible somewhere through this weekend, though, I don't see them going bogey-free mm -hmm. the whole weekend, let alone the whole round. But here you go. You got Eagle. It's You can see up to the left corner there through the gap. It, the hole is off to the right, so he's going to throw a big turnover. It's about 240 to the top of the hill. He's going way left, though. That, mm -hmm. that didn't go in too deep, though, so he should be all right there. I think he, he'll be able to get up and down. It, he's kind of disappointed that that didn't turn for him, but uh, that's a very steep hill. We talked about it earlier. Um, it, it probably plays up, uh, let's see, it probably plays up about 40 feet uh, or so, 30, 40 feet up that grade right there. So that's a, that's a tough shot, and it's clear back in the right corner. It's difficult to see because we we don't have the angle. Uh, this is up there pretty good right here. Babcock snuck through that window on the right side going center. Uh, this is totally blind for him, though. 
This is Poke and Hope, and hope you have a spotter. He's taking his time, checking the footing. Turn, please. That's also out to the left, looking to drift right. Did not drift left. He's in a little bit more trouble. He's in a little bit more trouble. Perhaps he could call Jake on the phone and Jake could come back and throw a little upside down out of yeah. there for him. Man, would be a nice skill to have. And I think, you know, Gavin is not too shabby in that category, but man, that spot is going to be tough. Yeah, this is a good example of why it's important to do field work and why it's important to practice more than one shot, more than one putt, uh, more than one approach, having both spins, learning to throw the disc upside down, uh, roll. These exactly. are all things that can really benefit you as a professional if you're looking to go in that direction. And it can make the game a lot more fun if you're just a weekend warrior. Isaac playing this one pretty straightforward. It looked like he turned over a little bit. We didn't get to see where he finished. Uh, it looked like he might have got a little bit to the right, though. But all these guys got out pretty good. They're only a couple hundred feet from the top of the hill. Take some of that slope out. Thomas also snuck through a little early on that hyzer window, but it looks like it worked out okay for him. Doesn't like it. Oh, they all had trouble keeping that disc turned over up that hill. Every single one of them. And as they walk up the fairway, let's jump ahead to hole nine. Justin Rosak from 60 feet obstructed for birdie. Hello. Gotta love that. Look at him casually walking over. Gotta love that. It's a That's long right. way to go, Justin. You got to pick the feet up. Uh, what a shot. He almost looks like he could be an age protected player, not running. <laughs> That's kind of an age protected gift. Now, Jake Wolf, pitch under the basket. And again, scrambling from outside the woods. Oh, there it is. One of those beautiful spiders out here at Prince Edward Island checking scores yet again log jam at three under par right now quite a few players right there fish o'reilly done at three under par aiden scott done at four eagle on a pretty hot pace so far i like o'reilly coming in at three down that's that's nice to see from that young man Another grinder on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. Every single stop, you'll see Connor O'Reilly. Yeah, yeah, he's a he's a very very uh, nice young man, pleasant to talk to, very open. If you get a chance to visit with him at a at some kind of uh, players get together or something, you should go over and ask him for his autograph and and uh, visit with him a little bit. Boy, this hole is a toughie. Hole ten, Jake Wolf. Just a screamer forehand down the middle. Nicely done. You got to throw it about 266 to 280 feet to hit the gap and keep it in the center. It's about 28 feet up. The whole hole is 545 feet par three, but it's a corner. It's a dead turn, uh, dead right turn on that one. Alden is going to get a nasty kick off to the left. Back to seven, Robinson, just trying to pitch out. Yep, yep. Babcock looking to do the same. Yeah, let's hope he can get over these trees. Yeah, I don't think he could get very much on it. Yeah, he's going to be just outside the edge of the circle. And now Eagle from the knee. Yeah, tough to throw so far uphill and get that disc to continue turning the whole way. Yeah, I think they all played it a little bit wide. You know, uh, 
when I was out there, it kind of seemed like you could take the disc more straight up the right side mm -hmm. and let it drift left and then try to make yourself a 45, 50 footer as opposed to trying to turn something over over the trees and carry right. Because if you miss it and it comes out shallow, you wind up where these gentlemen have been, you know, scrounging to try to get themselves in a better position. Uh, of course, Eagle didn't go in very deep. So uh, he has a reasonable up and down. Oh, come on. Nice little half bid there, keeping it in the circle. You know, you just don't want to have big blow ups on this course. Uh, it's, it's part of that stuff we talked about earlier with being humble about your game and, and the things that the course gives you when you're out here today. Um, it's going to be a challenge on every hole, especially when you hit these woods. Long nick there for Robinson, not going to fall. And that's going to be a bogey putt as well from circle mm -hmm. one. Hole number seven, posing quite the challenge here. I think Ben did a really good job on this hole. It's uh, it's blind off the tee. Uh, he's asking you to play something slower and get in position. And then he's asking you to uh, shoot a very difficult second shot in order to have your opportunity. Um, I think that's that's what more courses need to push these guys, uh, to challenge them to throw shots they're not familiar with. Um, you know, that long second shot that's demanding for the birdie from the fairway, especially exactly. uh, with rough footing, uh, short or uphill run-ups. These things are challenging. And that is going to be a tap-in bogey there for Robinson. Yeah, and I said the same thing. We played Bad Rock out for the K KC Wide Open this year. It was great to see so many second shots get designed intentionally and make it hard to throw that shot from behind a mini and design it to where the landing zones are on certain parts of the fairway where the players have really uncomfortable lies. Yeah. I, I, uh, yeah, see, this is that whole 10 I was talking about. I mean, it, you, you have to get up into this small gap. This gap that's up there is it's like, 20 it's maybe three paces four paces wide the gap it's it's like 26 feet or something 20 feet and that's a small window to land your first shot so you can have a second shot which is about 234 feet or so 235 feet to the basket through staggered trees all the way so another difficult hole as these guys get into work in here now 11 12 and 13 that's going to be a little stretch where i think these guys can get after it maybe get some birdies going on and opportunity here eagle mcmahon steps up to eight he's looking high he certainly is this is another one of those staggered uh gaps that he tried to pinch the right-handed guy off a little bit the first tree is is uh, 81 feet away or so, and the other one is about 151 feet. So you have a nice size gap in there, but it's staggered. So you have to work your way through the gap and then kind of flip up. Eagle, of course, looking to break the course, just goes completely over the top. Be interesting to see what Thomas tries to do here too. I think he's gonna be more traditional. Yeah, I mean, I think Isabel lined it up perfectly for us this morning. I mean, just a low kind of pushing hyzer. Yeah, a little flip up hyzer. Yeah. Uh, finishes left. I think that's a, a great way to play this hole. Yeah, there you go. Get a little ground play. Oh, my. Now, that's, that's a 15-foot drop off behind that basket, so... He's going to have some elevation work to go back up. 
but he is going to have a putt. Looks like edge of circle one, maybe, maybe that right in circle two. Oh, look at that. Some great ground play there. Kept him on the same level as the basket. So he'll have a little work there to get back to one under again. <laughs> I think that's the third time we've seen him at one under if he makes that putt. It's definitely been a bit of a roller coaster for him. Each birdie so far followed up by a bogey. Gavin going a little bit stronger, it looks like. Oh, but he gets through the tree line. Same thing, worked his way down, but he didn't go all the way down the hill there. So he's going to have a little bit of an elevation to work with. I don't know what the trees are going to look like there. There's probably 35, 40 trees on that left side that are all cleaned out. Mm -hmm. So they did a really good job cleaning the ground cover out of there. Uh, so you just have to kind of maneuver the little trees. Now, I wanted to ask you a question. We saw three pretty stock hyzers all get within circle one or so, and then Eagle McMahon going over the top and not necessarily having the best result. With how stock the hyzer is, um, after we watch, uh, I'll, I'll finish the question after we watch Alden pitch out here. Yeah, he got right in the gap, it looks like. Yeah, he just went a little long of the gap. See how small that gap is you have to land in? That's, that's, a, that's a tough hole. That's a big ask. Um, and I think that uh, we're going to see some frustration on that hole and some, you know, very happy campers. <laughs> Definitely. They actually make it work. And to finish my question, we saw Eagle going over the top. Do you think, you know, with the result he got on this shot, you think he's going to go with a more stock hyzer tomorrow? You know, there's also the side there, the flexi sidearm that we saw Jake throw earlier. Yes. And uh, so, I mean, he did work himself basket high. So if he would have drifted a little bit more left, he would have convinced himself that this was the shot he needed to do. Now, of course, this is what we talked about earlier, being creative, coming out of the woods, working your way around trees uh it looks like he has a line he's yeah. and he does have a line can you believe that over the top it is jim unbelievable no he's not going to change his game plan he's totally happy with throwing over a broken tree and that right there is going to be your halal guys spicy shot of the day what a putt from eagle yeah. mcmahon we've all been there in the woods the trees are so nice to frame it up you know all you have to do is get through that one little window and it's in the hole you can't miss it and halal he does guys. that so well Halal guys strive to delight each customer with unparalleled hospitality and mouthwatering food at great prices. And another spicy putt from Babcock. Yeah. Well, I think he likes done. being out there on circle one. <laughs> it's a, and it's, it can be a long day on the course when you have a ton of circle one, you know, edge putts. And he's been capitalizing so far. Yeah, the only one we really saw him miss was the uh, short one on one inside just outside the bullseye and uh the other one fell out and that was a great putt now gilbert for birdie oh very nicely done takes care of that elevation no problem Robinson grabs the birdie there. Well done. And now up ahead, Alden Harris. Coming off of a fantastic sixth place finish at the World Championships. That's circle one. And now Jake Wolf after clipping a tree in the middle. Well done. And with that said, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We will see you on the other side here on the Disc Golf Network.
So I started the Uliberry Leadership Foundation for a pretty simple reason. So I had to choose between education and following my dream of disc golf. I don't want other disc golf athletes to have to make that choice. Receiving a scholarship from the Leadership Foundation really did allow me to pursue my education, allow me to graduate on time while still having my passion be a big part of my life. So I got to do both and I love it. Can you feel it? It's fresh and something completely new. It's something that connects us with nature and where we care about what's around us. At Pure Disc, we believe that every small step counts. Our bags made from recycled materials may just be a drop in the ocean, but we believe this is the beginning of something. Pure Disc golf bags are waiting for you on our website, puredisc.net. With same day worldwide shipping, wherever you are. And now back, Justin Rosak, another long look. Yeah, Count it. in a row. That was to save par though on 10. On the same card, Jake Wolf, easy par tap in. Uh, you know, you've got to be happy taking that par, heading into 11, 12, and 13. Because it really, uh, those are scorable holes, I think, for these guys. Now up to nine, Eagle McMahon. This Heiser window can be blocked, but he is so high. Oh my gosh, he almost broke, he almost tipped that basket over. Good thing that pole has a pole protector on it. <laughs> oh, he's feeling it right now. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, some guys are born to break the rules. <laughs> it's been uh, an entertaining round, to say the least, so far for Eagle McMahon. And Gilbert, just on his heels. This down the middle, it looks like he's going down the middle. That's about 21 feet wide. It's it's a staggered gap. Um it's about 210 feet of trees. He went with the turnover. Wow. Yeah, that is a, that's a tough window, and that turnover is risky because if you clip a tree on the left side, you go into the shul, and that could be uh, difficult. It does look very inviting from the tee pad, though. Ben did a good job of lining this up to make you take those risks. And Isaac gets caught up a little early on that left side. He should have it up and That's down. That's what there. I was just saying. You hit, you clip a tree going down that left side, and you're off into the woods. Can't believe how high Eagle went with that hyzer, Brian. That was incredible. Yeah, 459 feet. Now Babcock. That, that's going to be a reasonable up and down. He might even have a window there to get a putt off. You know, the, the basket also sits 49 feet down. Well, Eagle is about a few feet away from the basket now after this massive 450-foot spike hyzer. Not sure if you can patent the spike hyzer, but look at this. You might as well, if you're Eagle McMahon, head on over to Sunstein. That's going to be the patent pending play of the day. Brought to you by our longtime partner of the tour, Sunstein. Nice shot. Kind of lucky that basket's still standing. <laughs> Nearly would have exploded had he touched that. Incredible. You, you know, there's only a handful of players that can throw the spike hyzer that high. I mean, we have a lot of distance throwers out there that can really smash the disc. But it's hard to see someone throw higher than Eagle McMahon. It's pretty incredible to watch. Well, you know, he has that he has that hip to shoulder pull mm -hmm. that uh, you really have to practice and you have to you have to be willing to open up you know, that and let that shoulder get through first, you know. Um, and uh, he does it very well. But again, he, his dad's an old school golfer 
flew through flippy discs. Probably the first thing he showed that young man was how to throw a hyzer. And Thomas not going to capitalize with a solid approach there. He's still going to have a bit of work. All right, now Wolf on 11. Tied for third. Just a slider down the pipe. That is pretty much a straight putter upshot, and he makes it. Oh my goodness, Jim! Jim, has there any has there been anyone when you were touring and competing at the top level that played like Jake Wolf? Well, there was lots of guys that had unique throws and threw the upside down shots and and that kind of stuff. I I do remember one guy, Randy Wagner, out of L.A. He was an ex-pitcher, and he would throw the the thumber, and he would throw it in the air. He would throw rollers. He'd throw upside down. It was the and you know the thumber's on the inside of the rim, and the fingers on the outside. It was it looked like a sidearm, but oh my gosh, how's he going to put his foot there? Oh wait, there's no two meter rule, so he gets a safe lie on the ground. Good from this. Just kidding. No, no handstand, Jim? No handstand? Yeah. Put your hand there. I, I remember one time uh, at Santa Cruz, uh, Val Jenkins threw a shot that hit a root ball, and they made her go up on the root ball and play it from there because it's still part of the ground attached. So, uh Wow. Right now, he's getting the rule of verticality somehow to place this one on the ground because that all looks like earth to me. He's obviously circle two. He's trying to step forward. Yeah, he wasn't going to be able to get a lot on that. That's a good play to get up and down. Yeah, you wonder if that's just, you know, straight up a safety thing. You know, yeah. if you can't even get your foot there. What do you, you know, what are you supposed well, you, to do? Yeah, you get the first available lie when you can't get your foot behind it. That's uh, that's kind of that rule of verticality rule. Mm -hmm. Well, he's going to take a picture and he's going to move on. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> Gilbert for par. Big drop from that tailwind. It's going to be a bogey there for Gilbert, dropping him back to even par. And they finally see Eagles drive. Yeah, somewhere wedged between the pole protector and that clump of grass. Bogey for Gilbert. I think it's hard to even illustrate how far... 459 feet on a spike hyzer truly is. What a smash of a drive from Eagle McMahon. Yeah, yeah it is 49 good. feet below his feet, but he has to go 60 feet over those trees. Now Alden Harris for birdie. Oh, oh, come on. Wow, that's a 7-10 split right there. Terrible. And Wolf is going to tap in. So, Let's walk through this hole, Jim. Okay, this hole is about three or four paces wide all the way up. You have to land about 260 to 280 feet up here in the middle. It's it's 80, let's see, it's 28 feet up the hill. Then as we come up this hill right here, you'll start to see the gap develop here to the right, right here. 
That is six paces wide. Look at even the drone can't make it through the gap. It has to go through the trees. And now we're 235 feet from the basket with lots of small trees to maneuver as you get up here. And then even if you get up here, a clear putt is 50-50. You may have to straddle. You might have to go wrong foot forward. We'll just have to wait and see what develops here. You can see how tight Ben made this green. Well, it's nap time for Eagle McMahon. So I'd like to see him go Heiser bomb on this one. <laughs> Me maybe, too. Maybe a small gap out to the right that uh, he's seen that no one else has seen. I think Ben might have done a good enough job on this one, Jim. I think he's going to have to go straight. I wish you could be here, Brian, to see how skinny this hole is. It is like a tunnel. Well, future card is backed up right now, waiting on the tee. As they wait, we're going to take a quick commercial break here on the Disc Golf Network. My name is Ricky Waisaki. I founded the Saki Bomb Foundation as a nonprofit organization committed to growing the sport of disc golf with America's youth. The foundation's first putt initiative puts 50 discs and one portable basket in the hands of PE teachers across the United States at no cost to the school. We've already sent first putt packages to schools in all 50 states with the generous support from our sponsors. If you want to be a part of this movement, visit SakiBombFoundation.org. Thank you for growing the sport of disc golf with us. back McMahon on 10 oh that might be the tree that you want to be at there's like a split tree on the left side Brian that's white that if you see them land near there they have a pretty good shot of going through that window it looked pretty good hard to tell being on that left side he's able to stretch out and throw the forehand if needed now Isaac Looked a little, might be a little short. It's, it's tough to tell from the angle we're getting, um, but uh, very good shots to get that far up the fairway. Yeah, I mean, hole 10 averaging a 4.45 even before the feature card rolls through, so. I totally believe that. Babcock. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Yes. That I'm I'm telling you, that guy has a cloaking device on his disc. <laughs> just turn on invisibility and let it fly. Oh, it's just moving right through the windows. Now Gilbert forehand.
Pretty. Okay, a little short on that one too, maybe. It's hard to tell. They're, uh, as they're backing up, you can see both uh, Isaac and Thomas are a little bit short. They might have to... I don't know if they're going to be able to get all the way to the basket. Let's take a look at Babcox again. Hard Annie out of the hand. I mean, yeah. the miss is left, so you can roll bounce back to the middle, but man. That's beautiful, isn't it? Look at that. It looks like it's right in the middle of the trail. It might be too good. And that, that is a blessing from the disc golf gods there. Only five birdies on the day. Up ahead, Jake Wolf. Well, that's a good recovery. That hole has a very small window. And if he tried to throw something upside down through there, it does not surprise me. He only got halfway there. Well, a nice approach there for Wolf. Gives him the opportunity for a par. Jake Wolf in a tie for second with Aiden Scott, who is done. Eagle McMahon has pulled ahead by one. Five under through nine seems like the mark that you've been uh, you've been talking about. Yeah, and and uh, you know uh, some of these guys are a little off their pace. I think if you would have asked them before they started these, uh, Andrew and Connor, they probably were thinking sixes or sevens. Um, but that, like I said, you know, uh, those fives and sixes, uh, those bogeys and double bogeys, they're out there. Um, they just have to be careful. See, he's a little pinched off here. I'm not sure if he's going to just play it clean or if he's going to try to go through a small gap and try to get up there a little farther. Yep. Oh, look at this. Oh, he hit a tree, but he got through that initial gap, Brian, and that that was a tough gap. Those hero shots are very risky. Well, step two is complete. He just has to get up and down for a four that takes almost a half stroke on the field. Yeah, I, I think he'll he'll be in pretty good position there. It looks like he's probably going to be within a maybe 100, 120 of the hole. So he should be able to get up and down uh, on that le up through that left side there. Now Robinson lining up on that left side, going backhand. A little bit tougher angle. The finish is to his benefit. Yeah, it, this this would be pretty sweet if he hits this window. It looks like he's a little closer to the gap. Oh, it's just working hard, isn't it? Yeah. That That's not too bad. That looked like almost edge of circle two. And uh, it looks like he has a pretty nice window coming towards the basket there as well. Now, up ahead, Rosak. Another mid-circle two look. 60-footer. Yes. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. That's hole 12. Awesome. I mean, when we get to that hole and they show it from the tee, it's it's pretty – it's the most wooded hole on the course, and we've played some pretty wooded holes. Well, he's got three of the last four. He is three under on the day, creeping up the leaderboard. Now McMahon. He was in a great spot, too. Just hated it right out of his hand. See, so yeah, I like how Gavin is a little bit left to give him a little bit more room down the middle as opposed to dead center where he might have to try to push it. I think he's going to have enough room to work this down. Let's hope he has a cloaking device on this one. <laughs> yeah, it gives him more room to throw, just kind of that gentle flex. Yeah, exactly. Oh, hurry back. There you go. Okay. He he slid out to he slid out a little bit there as he moved down that hill to the right of that basket coming in. It does slope off and uh the disc did get a little bit away from him. I think he would have liked to have thrown that just a little bit lower. Just a little bit lower. Babcock's going to be putting for birdie from circle 2. After a phenomenal drive, sneaking through that left side for the sixth birdie of the entire day. 
Now, Wolf up ahead for par. Yeah, this this is the stretch they're on right now. 11, 12, 13 that they they really need to take advantage of. A um, couple of the shortest holes in uh, 11 and 12 and 13's a pretty reasonable par four. It's another one of those, get it to the corner, get it up, up, up through that long edge. Uh, McMahon from the knee on the right side. Unforced error on that forehand. Yeah. <gasps> Unbelievable. <laughs> You know, you look at this guy, and he's looking like, oh, I'm just going to try to get up and down, and then he clanks it off the basket. He's done that to us a few times today, Jim, just blowing our <laughs> minds, just surprising us left and right. Look at this. Oh, that was, what, four inches low? I mean, first he hits us with the quick flip <laughs> mid-range roller, then he throws a 450-foot spike hyzer. I mean, this guy is playing some golf today. Yeah, I. you know, he was... He was late coming into the season. He still was struggling with that arm injury and working his way back. But you can see him slowly but surely, methodically finishing at the top of tournaments, doing better every round, using the sidearm more. Uh, it's, it's just a pleasure to see his patience in his recovery. Now, Gilbert. There's the touch from Gilbert. Beautiful. That was that was nicely done. Yeah, and I have to say the same thing about Eagle. I mean, a player like him who leaned so heavily on the sidearm before to actually have to rebuild different shapes with the backhand and then relearn the shapes with the forehand and still be playing at the top level. I mean, it's fantastic to watch. Yeah. Isaac didn't really have a good line there, it didn't look like. Oh, 13, here we go. Rosak again. He's three down. Nice, Justin. Gorgeous. Yeah, that looked good. You want to get to the top peak of that corner up there where you can see the trees dead in kind of, and then you kind of go on a left angle on that hole to play up for the par four. Rosak on a bit of a hot streak right now. Climbing up the leaderboard. Now we have a birdie look from Babcock, the sixth of the day for the whole field. Not going to fall there for Gavin. Par plays. Yeah, it does play on this hole. Uh, you know he wanted that. You know he you know he he got in really good position on that drive. Um, yeah. Up ahead, Wolf on 13. Forehand roller. Oh, that got a bad kick. So and with that drive from Wolf, we're going to take another break here on the Disc Golf Network. We'll see you on the other side. Whether I'm on the course or behind the camera, there's one thing driving me forward, the shot. The shot that no one else thinks about or would even dare to try. The shot that people will remember, that tells a story. For me, that's what disc golf's all about. Introducing the time-lapse, the first 12-speed featuring gyro over mole technology and the first disc in the Simon line, coming soon. Welcome back, Eagle McMahon on 11. 
Yeah, this hole's two, uh, 205 feet, par three. It's really a straightforward shot. There's lots of small trees around the green in the circle. The tree line's about 25 feet behind the basket, and there's no OB here. So this is the hole, if you had to bet to get an ace, this would be the one for me. And Eagle pulls that inside and gets to a decent spot. Nice kick. He's got kick. some ground play. He looks like he's just outside the circle, or maybe he's just in inside. The circle. Wow. Yeah, I got a nice. Like I said, 205. <laughs> yeah, nice little kick roll there. Oh, here we go. Oh, jeez. Oh, I did not write that down, but it happened. <laughs> we got to see this again. Has, has someone oh. scripted this round, Jim? I've The amount of highlights I've seen this round, incredible. Like I said, if I was to bet on an ace on this course, that was the hole right there. Thank you, Isaac. You are a world champion. Grabbing all of the weak side now, Gavin Babcock. Kick off that tree. There you go. Well done. That was pretty sweet. I really like this young man. I've had a chance to talk to him several times. I really like his attitude. Uh, it's very respectful. Uh, I really like, I like a lot of the new young kids that are playing, that whole group of them. Mm -hmm. You know, they're very respectful young men. Got a chance to play with Alden Harris in santa cruz that was a such a pleasure such a pleasure to play with that young man look at this one thomas just making it look easy what i have to say about babcock too is he's one of those players that started touring and grinding it out week to week when he was below a thousand rated he was committed to the craft of becoming the best player he could be and he is definitely starting to reap the benefits oh look at that a little fade away from Wolf. Okay. Now I know why he's all bandaged up. <laughs> he definitely plays lumberjack golf. That's for sure. Man, oh man. Where's Seth when you need him? <laughs> yeah, you know, you, you see players like Jake Wolf and you wonder how sustainable the play style is, but, you know... Pitchers are pitchers, uh, you know. It's we'll see how long it lasts. Well, I really, he, yeah, things are working, but you know, the ground play from some of those shots can get you in trouble. Exactly. And on a course like this, he's, it's probably benefiting him because there's so much stuff on the ground and so many small trees that he's just kind of plinkoing around mm -hmm. near the green. But, you know, if he's on a wide open course throwing those shots, they can skip and scoot and roll and, you know, probably cause them all kinds of problems. So I, I would recommend a little uh, a little backhand work uh, during the off season maybe would be beneficial. I mean, well, he's he looks like a terrific athlete um, and he's got great size. So there's no reason why he can't uh, compete at the top level with a few more shots in his bag. Well, the man is currently in second place. Had a great finish at the AFBO. Yep. And now our feature card grabbing some birdies. Moving on to number 12. Yep. Yep. Rosak. Oh, unforced air there. And as Rosak kicks off that tree to another 60-footer, we're going to throw it to one more commercial break for you. We'll see you soon on the Disc Golf Network. Great Lakes Disc, located in Grand Rapids, Michigan, is a fully stocked retail disc golf store that fulfills all of your disc golf needs. We carry all of the major manufacturers, accessories, and offer player and event sponsorship along with tournament payout assistance. To learn more about Great Lakes Disc, visit GreatLakesDisc.com. The Educational Disc Golf Experience is the leading nonprofit organization bringing disc golf to schools nationwide since 2003. EDGE provides age-appropriate discs, targets, and a classroom-linked curriculum which empower educators to teach the fundamentals of the sport. 
In Edge's 20 years of existence, over 2 million youth have been introduced to this great lifetime activity. Be a part of the next chapter of Disc Golf. Support Edge today. Are you sick and tired of browsing through countless online stores for your disc golf equipment only to come up empty handed? Look no farther. At Tintin Discs, we have a vast selection with pictures of each disc so you can find the exact one you need. We offer a wide variety of top quality brands at affordable prices, including discs, bags, accessories, and much more. Groundwork has been done. Alden Harris. Very yes. nice. Boy, he has been working hard all day long. And now Rosak. Speaking of working hard all day long, this is for par. Yeah. Oh. What Guy a, is murdering it from circle two. I was going to say, what a clinic so far. Our lead card is jumping up to hole 12. Here's what a hole brutal 12. tee shot. There's no OB. That's the upside on this hole. Um, it's kind of a poking hole. It's a tough window. You can obviously see there's a straight window right at it right here. Um, I think you can kind of play something that flips up a little and then finishes left. Because even if you go through the left window or the straight window, you can still wind up over here to the left and get yourself a little putt. Maybe edge of circle, maybe inside the circle. It's going to be pretty hard. The hole is 287 feet long. It was difficult to shoot. I mean, I probably shot it a dozen times and got a different measurement every time. But it is going to be hard to keep a disc going all the way through there. Uh, it looks like uh, Eagle might be trying. There's a little lefty hyzer window. I don't mm. think he cleared it out enough, but he might try to flex something down that middle, which again, if he works left, I think he has a little bit more room than, uh, than it looks like. And, and you get a kind of a nice little righty skip there too. It's kind of, yeah, looking like that forehand flip up line. We saw yeah, Ella I Hansen just perfection this morning. Yeah, I'd like to see him clean the left side up some more and give a outside blind look that way and maybe one on the right side too. Look at that. See, right up that left side. It took a bad kick at the off the last tree, but it looks like you want to go center there, but that just to the left there, I think is just a little bit better of a window to work your disc. Oh, look at this. Just as I said, it would be hard. He comes up and bangs it right through the middle. Yeah, there's your world champion, folks. Winning at WR Jackson, Smuggler's Notch. One of the that best gas hitters on tour. We all have a hole like this where we play golf or somewhere where we play golf near our house. And we always walk slowly to this tee pad. <laughs> yes. There you go, sneaking through that left side. And nice. he's a little short, but he has that. He's been putting, hitting the basket like crazy from that range. And that's three gap hits so far. Let's see if Gilbert can keep it clean. It happens. 
take a quick replay of the forehand that Eagle McMahon threw. Just clean, understable flip up. Oh. Clean until there. Nice stop on that left side. Now. Eagle McMahon waiting on his next shot. Now Wolf up ahead on 13. Solo second place for the overhand specialist, Wolf. Gilbert. Oh, he left that out a little shallow, but he's, I think he can get up and down there should be 25 feet away for Gilbert save the par and now up ahead to 14 Wolf well done yeah this is the lightning hole and uh, the story that Bob told me was hilarious on this hole. The guy was running the excavator and he started to go the wrong way. And he started yelling at him, telling him, you're going off the property. You're going off the property. And the guy makes a huge turn and winds up creating this fairway. And Bob says, you know what? I'm going to make this work. funny how that works okay yeah he goes I think I can work with this clearly what a beautiful hole it made Ben I meant in there not Bob yeah yeah, Ben Smith. Yep. Now Gilbert for par. There you go. And now McMahon putting for birdie to get to seven under par. One hundred percent circle one, one hundred percent circle two. The man's putter has not touched the ground all day long. Robinson grabs the birdie as well. And Babcock grabs the par, moving into hole number 13. And as they jump to hole number 13, we're going to do Jim's keys for closing here. Brought to you by BlackInkDisc.com. Well, uh, it's real simple. You want to stay in bounds, stay out of the hazards. Uh, it's very important to keep your disc clean as you're finishing on these holes. There are two tough par fours uh, coming up. Uh, you don't want to give up your equity. You've worked hard the entire round to get to where you are right now. You do not want to start throwing it away. You do not want to take risks if you don't have to. If you're out of position, play smart. Get your par, bring in a score in the first round. That's an important thing. And hopefully you've been doing a lot of eating and drinking so you can finish strong. You've got to climb the hills back out of this little canyon we've been in here in the woods. And you got to climb all the way back to hole 18. So uh, just stay strong and stay focused right now. Jim's Keys for closing brought to you by blackinkdisc.com.
premium disc golf store. They're listening to you, Jim. Yeah, well, there's Ben right there, making sure they're all getting their water, staying hydrated. That's the kind of course designer and director he is. Well, the player hospitality seems to be at an all-time high. Everyone I've talked to that's been out there as a player seems to be having a fantastic time. The views look stellar. The, this is a must this is a must come and do. <laughs> I mean, you got to come here. I mean, the seafood is awesome here. The sushi is awesome here. There's a, a place right up the street called Hand Pie that makes the old, uh, uh, you know, Dutch or Danish pasties and uh, pies. And oh, my goodness. It's, you know what? Yeah. I've heard that. It. I've heard that from a lot of people. It's a wonderful place to be. And as we fly through the 13th, it's a tricky tight hole. Jim, walk us through. Well, it's 501 feet. It's a par four. It's a tight gap up a 25 foot slope. There's, it's uh, nasty off the fairways either way. Most of the fairway is only four to eight paces wide. Uh, you want to get up to the top here about 270 feet or so and then push left. Uh, that puts you into a good position to go about 230 up a 28 foot grade uh, with lots of staggered trees. Uh, you, you can work your way to the right, you can see there. Going up the middle is not a bad throw for the side armors. I think most guys are going to try to work that right side. Uh, these last trees that we come up to, this one's 43 feet from the basket. Uh, there's no bees on this. Uh, so if you can get up past that last tree on your second shot, you've got a really good shot at a birdie. And this is the end of that stretch that we were talking about, uh, where you go through 11, 12, and 13. And uh, you can see Eagle's already got two of them. Justin got two of them. Uh, Eagle, Nick Mann. Isaac got two of them. Jake, Jake got two of them. This is a really good spot on the course. Taking a look at these Paragon Disc Golf notable statistics for Eagle McMahon. Uh, I think first place in every category is pretty good, Jim. Well, that's kind of why he's in first place. Could Everything. be. Everything just working perfectly. Scramble rate on this course being 100% is just phenomenal. He's the only guy. Uh-oh, I shouldn't say that. I almost said, bogey free. <laughs> Can't jinx him here now. Can't jinx him. Shh, Eagle didn't hear me. It, it's just been a phenomenal day for him. And like you said, and like we've been talking about, even when he's out of position, he's been throwing from the knee so well. He's been resourceful. He's been throwing trick shots as if he practices them routinely. It's just, again, like you said, a kid who was raised by a Frisbee player that's just learned to do pretty much anything with a disc and – it's just been spectacular to watch. I have a question for our I have a question for our listeners, Brian. What Grateful Dead song do you think he has going in his head right now? <laughs> Him and his dad just have a great history listening to the dead, playing disc golf. There's a great documentary by Joe Mez on Eagle McMahon and his growing up. It's been a real treat to watch him evolve as a human and an athlete in front of our very eyes. That might have got an early kick. Be interesting to see if he has a way out of that one. But he has both spins, so he might be able to get up and down for the par, but so far, we've said that, and he's thrown him off the basket. This looks pretty nice right here. Yeah. Very I just well got a done. text from my buddy, Burke Ellis. He said, eyes of the world. <laughs> Thank you for coming in with the first guest, Burke <laughs> Ellis. Now, Gavin Babcock.
Flattening nicely. That left side's not too bad. Stretch out forehand awaits. Yeah, I don't know if you got far enough up there, Brian. It's tough to tell from the angle we are with the catch cam. Um, we'll have to wait and see. But you really have to push it up there and get it up there between 260, 280, up that hill. Uh, if you come in low, it's a pretty tight window. The sidearms might be able to wiggle something out of there, but we'll have to wait and see. Oh, he's just overthrowing. Yeah, just didn't stay committed to that release angle, and now he's off to the right side. Well, hopefully he'll play two smart shots right here. Uh, one to put him in position and one to put him under the hole. Again, he's he's been a little quick with his deliveries today, so he's a little off. You talked about his maturity earlier in the round when we first started playing and some of the things he needs to work on. This could be one of those things that he just needs to slow down a little bit. Um, hopefully he continues to stay patient. Uh, he's done a very good job of managing his game today. Uh, he's, you know, he's got the, he's got the one bogey he, or two bogeys and three birdies and he's got himself out of trouble many times. Uh, it's I, I, I do like his game and, uh, and I do like his future. I'll tell you that. Oh, I absolutely agree. I think he's just a phenomenal thrower of the disc and he's got the disc part of disc golf down. I think the scoring will come. He's been out here committing his whole life to this game for many years now. And again, if you're just tuning in now and you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to scan the QR code in the bottom left corner for a free seven-day trial of the Disc Golf Network. Finish off this tournament here in PEI and also the beginning of the MVP Open at Maple Hill. You do not want to miss it. Gilbert's second. What the heck was that? That looked like it worked left on him, didn't it? Yeah, and right out of his hand, he was not pleased. Well, he was trying to pull off a, a power stance move there. One of the reasons these young kids spend all the time in the gym. You never know what <laughs> how you're going to have to stand. You know, it, it's good to have that body strength, but it looked like he might have hit something and kicked off to the left a little bit there. And up ahead to Jake Wolf, little forehand down the left side, no problem. Circle one putting for bogey, unfortunately, oh, yeah. for Wolf. He's on the lightning hole, isn't he? 14? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Whew. That, you know, that truly should be a par five. It really should. Uh, a four is a very good score there. Uh, I have not seen the numbers yet on that hole, but just glancing at the top people, it's looking like lots of bogeys and double bogeys who went through there already. Well, Jim, I got to tell you, Holden, oh. as our lead card goes into hole number 14, there have been zero birdies so far. Oh, yeah, that's the only way to get that hole is to go over the top, I think, as a birdie. The way the hole sets up, it's, it's you know, it's a tough three. Okay, so this is what we were talking about. He's a little pinched off there, Eagle was. So, you know. He's got a good score. He's uh, holding on to that equity like we talked about. You know, playing the smart shot back out in the middle of the fairway. Oh, he is really trapped here. You can see the hurricane examples everywhere you look. There's another root ball right there, another tree that got pushed over. And it's wild, all these trees coming down, how tight the course still is playing. Yeah, you know, it's you got a thousand trees and 500 of them fall, you still got 500 <laughs> left. It's, Absolutely. That's just some quick elementary math, I guess. <laughs> Now Thomas Gilbert out of the woods left. Oh, that that's a fine shot. I, I don't know if that's going to give him a putt because there's so many trees around this green. You know, it is very well guarded coming in. Uh, but he did make very good forward progress there. 
Yeah, now Babcock, like you said, didn't quite get far enough to have a comfortable forehand on the left side. Kevin, let's see a nice shot here. Don't try to bite off too much. Only five birdies on 13 as well. Okay. Not terrible. Yeah, we'll see what he has from there. Uh, we talked about this in the very beginning, Brian. We were going to see this all day. These guys having to scramble, you know, they're wearing their scramble shoes today. They're going to get on their knees. They're going to, you know, throw shots that they don't throw all the time. Side arms and upside down and, you know, except for Jake. Um, but uh, just working the disc as much as they can. And even here where Isaac threw a really good drive, he's got to work those last trees. Oh, mm. tough kick. Let's hope he has a little putt from there so we can add to the birdie total. It's going to be a tough lie there for Robinson, but still an opportunity. Again, only five birdies on the hole so far, averaging a 4.24. What's hole 14 averaging right now, out of curiosity, where they're headed next? Hole 14 is averaging a 5.27 on a par 4. Like I said, Jim, no birdies so far. So scoring more like that par 5 uh, like you're talking about. Yeah, it, yeah. We, ben and I talked about that one in 16, that uh, it, they really should have been par, uh, mm -hmm. par 5s. What a great save from Eagle. He, he was cut off. He threw it a little short on his up. He played it to the middle of the fairway. And now he's under the basket for a par. And that that's brilliant. That's brilliant golf right there. Let's take a look one more time, Jim. Yeah, a little flat with something overstable. Let it ride out at the end. Beautiful. Beautiful. Patient been all playing. day. He's been patient all day. I mean, he's just showcased the full skill set. I mean, out here, being 7 under through 12 is fantastic. Yeah, I think he's got an opportunity to get a couple of more birdies as well. Um, 15 and 17. If he can get off the tee on 16, I think he's got the power to get to that one. And 18, depending on what the wind's like when we get back out there. It's very, it's like playing two courses here. You know, when you're up on those link style holes, you feel the wind. When you drop down into this little valley with these trees, you hardly feel the wind at all. You almost forget it's there until you walk back out there. That might have got up there a little long. It's going to be a downhill look from 20, 25 feet for Thomas Gilbert. Sitting at one under par, tied I'd for like, 11th. Yeah, I'd like to see him get that putt so he could stay at par. We continue oh, just yeah. trudging. Oh, yeah, got a, just a couple of trees. Just a couple of trees between him and the basket. Looks like the hurricane totally missed this area. Underbrush is very high here. This is his yeah. third. Oh, what touch. That was really well done. Really well done. Yeah, I mean, just this, these little saplings, these little bushes and underbrush off the fairway makes these shots so much tougher. I mean, we've heard players like Calvin Heimberg even praise and want more of this type of underbrush on the left and right side of fairways to just add more teeth to some of these wooded courses. Well, it, it does add an element of, uh, 
I guess there's a little bit of a fear factor. You want to stay on the fairway. Definitely. Uh, you know, you don't don't get to grip and rip it every single time. And wherever you kick to, you got to wipe, you got to get by a couple of big trees, and all the little ones are gone. It really makes for some compelling golf and some challenging stuff. Oh, Almost like they forgot to put the pole protector on that <laughs> one. It may have taken a ding. Robinson going to tap in a par. And McMahon will also do the same. All right. Take your time here, Thomas. Let's get this one in the hole. This is for bogey. Yep. Keep him at par, though, for the round, which is going to be very helpful as he goes into these last few holes. There you go. He's been really solid on those putts where he's had to save his par or save his bogey. Um, he's done that all day. And uh, he's been a little aggressive, though, in certain situations, and it's cost him. Your feature card tapping out, moving on to the next. Now, Justin Rosak. That is a bogey. Two under par for the round for Rosak, tied for ninth. Tap in now for Wolf. This is also a bogey. And Alden Harris, an unfortunate quintuple bogey nine. Moving into 15. Wow. Rough stretch. Let's Chances fly this. Are we aren't going to see a highlight reel for that one. Well, <laughs> let's jump to 14, Jim, and let's talk about it. We were just saying how difficult it's been playing. Okay, this is an 844 foot par four. It's the lightning hole. It's 900. See that root ball? That's 290 feet away from the tee. It's 21 feet down, another 93 feet down to another 93 feet down to get to the corner where it's 177 to get around this next corner. And then you have to go down the hill. Uh, and the, the left side of the green is a little better than the right side. And this is, you can't even see the basket yet. It's all the way, that's the girl's basket or the female's basket. There's our basket right there that we're playing to. You see it down there? Oh my goodness. Yeah, there's no OB on this hole. So one of the strategies that I thought someone might try, and I don't know if anyone did, we haven't seen it on film, was to play to the root ball just before the root ball and then go over the top of the trees. It's probably 350 to 400 to go over the trees, but you could see the greens very small. And Ben pushed that basket all the way up to that right side there. So it's, it's gonna be a tough hole. I think Eagle's gonna try to make it all the way around the corner though. It's, it's hard to tell, We you know, it's tough to, see what's going on in this kid's mind. He's got so many shots, but it wouldn't surprise me if he tries. Oh, now he's going back in. He's got the wheels turning, Jim. Oh, he does. The hamsters are working hard. <laughs> what the? Huge are you distance kidding me? line. Potter finds it. Crowd loves it. Okay, he may have made it to that second corner by going over the top and to the right. He may have a shot down that gap. We might see the only birdie. We talked in the very beginning, Brian, about a guy who could break the course. You got people like Simon. You know, you've got Paul Macbeth. You've got Eagle McMahon. These guys break courses. And uh, it's fun to watch when they do it. Well, what's interesting is, you know, you have Eagle going up against a guy like Isaac Robinson who likes to just play the course as it's designed, and they're duking it out. They're going back and forth. I, I love it. Yeah, it, it's going to be interesting to see. 
Um, Eagle is playing a lot more risky shots. Right now, he seems to be landing in places that he can scramble out of. 10 or 15 feet right or left on some of those holes, and it may not work. Look at this one. Also pushing all the way down. Oh, that's a tough roll. But where those people are is the next corner that goes straight down to the basket that we saw in the flyover. So he's done a really good job of getting close to that corner. Now Gilbert. That was a fantastic forehand from Gavin. See if he can match. Oh, look at the skip he got off the top of that hill. That is beautiful. Yeah, okay, so now we're going to see if he... They, there's an inside gap on that corner where you saw those skinny trees to the left of the big tree that you could maybe work your way down towards the uh, FPO basket. This is just crazy. I, I am so... I can hardly wait to see where he actually landed and see how it lines up. Look how far right that's going. But here it comes back. It's tumbling down. Oh, he's going to be short of the corner. But he's up high enough there. If he can get an arm swing, he might be able to drag a sidearm down that hill and have it work back to the right. Uh, well, I love how the fairway is really shaped up for him to throw that max distance line to begin with. It's almost begging for him to do it, but there's only maybe one guy in the field that can. Yeah, you know, you're not looking at a very wide fairway. No. So uh, it's a, it's definitely a risk. He's even wondering where he is right now. And there's a helpful spotter and fan join a piece of pizza, or maybe it's uh, something from the uh, hand pie place. Well earned. Yes, absolutely. And we watch replays of Eagle McMahon's shot, and we kind of glanced over the fact that Isaac Robinson just threw a beautiful bullet right down the middle. Yeah, he's going to have to throw a nice little touch shot, which for me, he's one of the best. Him and Simon have that long-range touch that's, you know, that's just amazing to watch uh, the speed control they have. So it'll be interesting to see what he does. So it looks like Bill's going to take the fans down below him to see the shot. Well, as they're doing that, I have to say, I'm looking at the scores, and I know that we just mentioned that there's been no birdies on the day, no threes here. Jim, there's only been seven fours on this hole out of 50-plus players. Yeah. Now Rosak for birdie on 15. Got it. All right. Rosak, three under par, tied for fifth. He and Gavin Babcock have done a really good job of putting from the edge of circle one all day. Both of them have done a fantastic job. Justin and Gavin. Now Wolf. Got it. Birdie on 15. He's in solo second. Five under par for the round. Just two off Eagle McMahon. And now... This is a low ceiling. They are so lucky that they uh, decided to bring... The OB line at first was on the other side of that... That... Uh, that road and they brought it back to this side of the road uh, because of the low ceiling to give these guys an opportunity to to work the disc across there now rosak this hole is 775 feet long and it is so far up this hill it is crazy now robinson uh, Oh my gosh, he's going over. Just when you thought he was going to be throw a little chip shot. 
Okay. That well done. Like yeah. That was an e-ticket ride for Disneyland right there, that catch <laughs> cam. He had us going all over the place. Well, calculated aggression there from Isaac Robinson. Advances the fairway a decent amount. We might even see him throw another sidearm, huh? <laughs> well, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves, Jim. We'll, <laughs> I think he gets one per round. Getting out on a limb there, making a prediction. I mean, we'll it's pretty incredible. I mean, we see James Conrad throw more forehands than we see Isaac Robinson throw. So it's it was pretty impressive to just see one. Okay, it looks like Eagle may have spotted a window up above him to throw that little flex down that alley. Let's see if he can hit the... No. He's got about eight things running through his head. Well, still okay, might we'll have wait some to work. see where he lines up. I'm not going to make any early predictions on that one. He was a little pinched off there, though. You could see that with that big shot over the top. So I'd like to see him throw that first shot as a layup to the root ball there at the top of the hill and then throw that big shot that he just threw right there down to the bottom. I was thinking the same thing. You know, because then he could – he's below the hole – and even if he's in the trees, he can kind of work himself back up for a pretty easy par up and down. And if he if he sh puts a the right move on the disc, he'll end up with a birdie opportunity. Well, now Babcock lining up a huge panning forehand here. Oh, that's got a hold. Okay, it looks like the result turned out okay. Because the catch cam guy is probably in the fairway. So that'd <laughs> Man, be my players guess. are trudging through this hole, just trying to pick it apart and unpack what you even do. Yeah, they're, they're all still trying to figure this hole out, Jim. Yeah, and, and the catch cam guy is like, does anyone have a bicycle helmet or something <laughs> yeah. that I could put on while I'm, I'm in harm's way here as these guys keep going over the top. Can somebody text me what line they're taking? Because <laughs> I have no idea. Now Gilbert going high backhand. With the spike Kaiser. So if he can get through clean, he's going to finish back left, but he goes to... Okay. Not sure. It's out in the open. It's an opportunity to get up and down. Yeah, it is interesting. This little bend, that little connecting piece of the lightning bolt is so challenging maneuver. Wolf on 16. Smash to the top of the hill. Now Rozak second. This is a blind shot. This is all hazard right and left on both sides. The long grass is all hazard. And that should be okay for Rozak as well. It's, uh, Back to Babcock. Most of those fairways uh, on that link stuff, with the exception of hole two, Babcock landed in a great spot. And if he's the first one to be shooting, everybody else should be past the, the FBO basket as well. Eagle lining up another forehand roller. I think he's got an, it's overstable, Brian. I think he's going to try to pan this out. Oh, you might be right. Oh, no, he did try a roller. I, I think it, it was a mixture of both. I think he did go wicked over stable disc, but tried to cut it 
out of the flight rather than pushing I got it you. left. I got you. This tough. That look. didn't get out very far. That could be trouble for him, though. That could be our last guy falling on the bogey free. Well, but Gilbert. what I was saying earlier is as these guys approach these link style holes, these fairways are 95 feet wide. There's 16 passes with a five foot mower. That's what Ben told me. <laughs> so they're about 95 feet. Uh, they haven't changed much over the years, but uh, they've kind of toyed with how big they should make them. Um, trying to, I, I like the fact that they're not OB, that it's, that it's uh, hazard. So, you know, guys have to get over there and make a stand still, but it puts an emphasis on staying on the fairway. Gilbert showing off a little bit of touch now. Yeah, like we see, Eagle has... That quite, for par, right? Yeah, quite a bit left. Yeah. I'm sorry, Eagle. That was my fault. <laughs> well, what's I, funny I is... I tried to whisper. If he takes the five... When you look at the scoring spread, he's taken a pretty solid number. But on paper, it definitely is bogey. But this is the bogey to take if you take one. Yeah. I, I think that most of these guys on this card and the card we just went, the other card we've been watching, are strong enough to get a birdie opportunity on 16, even being a par four. Um, I think they're doing a better job on that hole than what people thought they were going to do because they were talking about maybe making that a par five next year. But based on the numbers, uh, there's, I, I, there's a lot of bogeys on that hole, um, on 16 as well. So, Ooh, that might've been a little too aggressive. Slid a bit deep there. Yeah. We'll see what he gets coming out of that little pine tree, Christmas tree. Like, Jake Wolf, third. His third. Yep. So another par. It's it's sixteen's a a tough hole, but they can get a par. You know they have the strength to get up that hill. It's it's pretty much driver driver driver, <laughs> make your putt. Well, with so. that par from Wolf, it's going to be uh, solo second place still. He remains at five under, two off Eagle McMahon. And Eagle, with this putt for bogey, this could tie him with Jake Wolf if he misses this. Well, hopefully he figures out a way to, uh, to get this one in and he can pick up a birdie on 15. That's a pretty straightforward hole. They had some OB on it, but they took it out. So I think the guys are going to be really aggressive on that hole. Great putt. He scrambled well all day. He really has. Even though he took a bogey on that hole, which is really what it should be a par five. It really should. Eagle is still in the lead by one over Wolf. Now Babcock. Oh. He needs to get that putt a little farther away from the basket. He's way more comfortable. <laughs> Just sneaks it over the rim. Babcock is three down. Tied for fifth. Now Gilbert. Nice par. All right. Robinson also in a tie for fifth place. It's been a quiet round so far for him. Three under. And now another long look for Rozak for par. Flag is almost still. Oh. Not going to happen there for Rozak. Now Wolf. This is to stay one off the lead in McMahon. Got it. Yep, you got to be making those par putts coming down the stretch. You don't want to give up that equity. And with that, we will take a break here on the Disc Golf Network. We'll see you soon.
all the scoring that we do in our sport now is all digital. Having some sort of backup power source is gonna be really important. We feel that it's a good quality product. And having a stash pack that holds the cable that connects to any device, it just works. And so that's why this thing really works for me. At Discraft, we don't wait to see what the future holds. We build it. The future is in your hands. Great Lakes Disc, located in Grand Rapids, Michigan, is a fully stocked retail disc golf store that fulfills all of your disc golf needs. We carry all of the major manufacturers, accessories, and offer player and event sponsorship along with tournament payout assistance. To learn more about Great Lakes Disc, visit greatlakesdisc.com. One of my favorite memories growing up was a trip I took with my dad to Hawaii. We just got done with a round of disc golf and decided to listen to the Grateful Dead. Without saying anything, we both knew we needed to dance, and that's exactly what we did. Sometimes you just need to stop and enjoy the music. TeamDiscraft.com All the team favorites on one site. Welcome back, hole number 15, Isaac Robinson on the box. Yeah, this hole is 320 feet par three. You just want to drop it through that gap on the left side there, let it trickle down. That is a putt. Uh, the creek is plain as casual, so there's no OB. Um, if you land on the flat, if you catch the trees and fall on the top on the flat, it's only 71 feet. Uh, to putt across the creek from that flat spot. But I think most of these guys are going to take something over stable and just jam it right in there. Babcock going high. Nicely done. So Isaac looks like he's making a little bit of a slow comeback. I know when you interviewed him at the Worlds, he talked about how just don't shoot yourself in the foot during those first few rounds. Give yourself an opportunity to stay close. And I think right now he's doing that. He makes his putt right here. He moves into a tie for third. And, uh, and uh, that puts him in great position, especially with 17 coming up, which is a drivable hole. If you can par 16. He may even have a shot if he can get a good drive off on 18 to maybe get a birdie opportunity there. Eagle with the Stockheiser here off to the up. right. Yeah, a little high, kind of pushed him off. He's going to have to putt from the creek now. That's an, The basket's a little elevated up the hill. It's, not, it's about like hole eight was where mm -hmm. we saw Gilbert make that putt on eight, about 15 feet or so. Um, it's a makeable putt for these guys. All right, now Wolf on 17. Come back, come back, come back. Really? Oh, come on. Did that stay in the hazard? I believe it did. Oh. And just not getting it back online. That is Jake a long Wolf. way, 393 feet to throw anything upside down and he's got a long ways to go to the basket as well Rozak oh, sit 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 oh Alden did a good job of blocking us there we'll have <laughs> to find out later it's a circle Here we go. two look birdie look for eagle oh yeah He's been amazing all day long. Eagle being eagle. 
Yeah, he's just been making some of those really spectacular shots look routine. And I can assure you that they're not. Well, you know, the best players do. You know, we talk about Isaac. We talk about Simon. When Paul's on his game, when Ricky's on his game, Eagle's on his game, these guys make it look easy, you know? And every one of these guys we're mentioning right there are kind of the mature guys, the older guys uh, that are still on the tour. When I played, when you were in your 30s, you were at playing your best golf. Mm -hmm. Gilbert, oh, birdie. Gilbert, there you go, buddy. Back to one under. Well, and to go on that point, Jim, it's funny. A lot of times they make it look easy because of the decisions they make. They don't force anything. They don't make anything too hard, but then it's spectacular when they have to throw something hard and they still make it look easy. Well, you're a hundred percent right. Uh, you know, and, and they, their demeanor, uh, also helps you know, let people know that, uh, I'm having fun mm -hmm. and I, I love doing this, you know, look at that little star frame for us. Nice grouping there. Take a quick look at this putt from Eagle McMahon down in the creek. Well done. He's really been impressive with those long putts. This could go a long way with him. I mean, he made that putt on uh, hole eight over mm -hmm. the tree branch, remember, through the trees when we thought he was kind of snookered over there on the right side going with the big hyzer and uh this great scramble shots all day you know and taking a quick look at the scores jake wolf currently putting for bogey from circle one he's gonna drop back to four under eagle mcmahon's gonna have the lead by three over quite a few players log jam at four under Al Rosak for birdie. And with that, he goes on to par. Lots of long putts today for Rosak. Hoping to clean that up tomorrow. Now on 16, Robinson. Okay, he pushed that out there maybe a little too far. We'll see what he has going up that hill. You really want to try to push it past the small tree we'll see in a few minutes uh, at the top of the hill. Uh, it's dead center in the middle, and uh, it's kind of a good uh, eyesight to keep your shot because you're thrown to a blind landing zone on the second shot. Okay. Gavin goes forehand, sticks it in play. 4.52 average on the day for hole number 18. Fourth hardest on the course. Only four birdies so far. Well, it was a southern wind earlier today, which was odd. Usually that's a tailwind, a north wind for those guys on 18. So I can see why they were probably having a little struggle getting it far enough down to feel like they could get over and make that that uh, shot for that birdie. Um, we'll have to see how the leaders are. It doesn't look like the wind's blowing much now. So we'll see what these last two cards do when they get in there. And Eagle is going to blast it long. Looking like it might be in the hazard, unfortunately. Just have to take a closer look when we get up there. 41% of the field, bogey or worse here on number 18. Just a brutal, sorry, not 18. We are on 16. Yeah. Zero birdies on 16. Four on 18. Yeah, four and 16 are the two holes that really need to be par fives if you want to see birdies. <laughs> and 
Maverick Robertson. <coughs> oh. That's not how Maverick wanted his debut to go. Just a bit too far off to that right side. Yeah. And after the bogey on the previous hole, Jake Wolf looking to finish strong. Big forehand. Holy smokes, he reaches down there like Holcomb, huh? I feel like we got a submarine pitcher coming in. He switched. And that'll be just fine for Jake Wolf. That's awful short, though. He does look like he's uh, got a little structural pain going on, though, as he's walking there. I hope he's okay. Now back to 16, Babcock. Yeah, looking at the stats here, zero birdies and only six pars on this hole. Maybe we got another glimpse of the mad scientist probably enjoying watching this. <laughs> He, he says to me, he said to me today that uh, he just doesn't have enough thousand rated players here to always make his experiments work out. So he regrets not making these par fives, but he thought par four would be good for these guys. But as you can see on 14 and 16, they're working really hard to get a par. And Robinson going big hyzer over the right side. I mean, it's yeah. so uphill, you can barely even follow through past the mini. It's got to be a 90 foot rise going all the way up that hill. Even that second shot or the shot they're about to throw once they get past the tree is 40 feet high, you know, up to the basket. And they're probably, it's probably a 450 foot shot from down there. And now Eagle I mean, from the hazard. Like that. It'll play like that. It'll be shorter, but it'll play like 400 plus. Okay, that's back out in the fairway. Eagle having a little bit of trouble here, coming down the stretch, letting some of that equity slip away from him. Yeah, but obviously again, 14. we have a lot. Of, yeah, obviously we have a lot of golf left, and uh, but uh, those three guys four strokes behind him. What is that? Five guys four three strokes behind him. There. Are, it keeps uh -oh. building up currently at five uh -oh. strokes or five players, but now Gilbert pulls that off to the right side. Thomas, Thomas, Thomas. <laughs> Definitely looking like some discomfort with the uphill run up. Sometimes you just, you, you can't bite off more, you know, than you could chew on some of these holes, especially with these blind hazards. You know, you're, you're better off playing it clean and uh, and looking to try to make some distance up when you can see the basket. And yeah, like you said, Eagle, on the fairway after three throws, it's looking like a bogey is likely there are five players within three strokes of Eagle McMahon right now. He's got to stay foot on the gas up until the finish. Well, I think he just needs to make sure he gets a bogey here and not a double bogey. Correct. Um, 17 is definitely in his wheelhouse being just under 400 feet. Um, and uh, 18 could be in his wheelhouse with the wind down. He could really get one off the hill there if he can keep it in the fairway. That's the tough part. Babcock sticks it right under the basket inside the bullseye. It's going to be a par look. Only the seventh of the day so far.
Well, that's inside circle one. Up to 18, Jake Wolf. You should be laying this up right before the OB line and then throwing onto the island, I would imagine. And that's a circle two look for Jake Wolf. He threw it onto the island. <laughs> what You've a got shot. You're kidding me. Just a little drop back. No problem there for Jake Wolf. That. I can't believe he went over <laughs> the OB there. He's certainly fun to watch, that's for sure. Looking forward to seeing more of him tomorrow. Oh, Thomas has got some high grass here to try to throw out of. These bushes. I'm not sure he's going to get much of a run up from there. And like you said, I, I kind of like the element of hazard that is this. Uh, I like that a player now gets the penalty for missing the fairway and now has to throw from terrible footing. It, it's definitely a challenge, that's for sure. There's been talk as well of making the hazard a, a position to where instead of giving a stroke that you can't take a run up and you have to throw from the hazard without uh, – any run up at all a standstill play and i guess that works if the hazard is a long way yeah. from the hole but the closer you get to the hole they're standing there anyway you know what i mean it, it, it would it be the same rules as circle one essentially you have to display balance behind the behind the lie i i i don't know it, it's kind of there's some course designers have talked about little nuances that they might be able to add to mm -hmm the development of the game. I'm not sure if I totally agree with that one. I definitely like, uh, I definitely like this, this idea of the, of the hazard with the stroke and, and really, you know, they, they, I mean, the fairway's 95 feet wide. He gives them plenty of room to mm -hmm. land. You know, it, the only guy that's going out of bounds is miss throwing it or trying to bite off more than he should. And the flight factory drone flyover of the gallery walking up the hill here. Just another beautiful shot of this Rose Valley course. Got some looks for par. Obviously no looks for birdie yet. I'm looking forward to seeing the player who does give themselves a look at birdie on this one. Now Gilbert. He has made that putt all day to stay away from the double bogey. He really has. That's He's... you got to give it to him. You I mean, really do. He's certainly working hard to stay where he's at right now. It's been a very solid day, other than yeah. a couple of simple mistakes. Yeah, I think he got a greedy on a couple of shots uh, and tried to get a little too aggressive off the tee pad. He has enough power where he doesn't have to be that aggressive, I think. Hopefully he'll tame it down tomorrow and shoot a cleaner round and hold on to some of those birdies. And McMahon is also going to grab a bogey. Bogey. He is now two strokes off of second place. And Babcock, one of those players tied for second place, remains at four under. We have a tight race going into the final day. Eagle McMahon, your leader by two. Let's take a look at some of the brilliance he has displayed today, Jim. You know, he started out this round uh, through the first 13 holes being steady as a rock. It's just been amazing to watch him execute the saves 
scramble out of trouble, even scramble out of trouble to get a birdies on the par four on some of the par fours. This shot on eight was, you know, that that's what if you don't like that, <laughs> you do not like this golf. <laughs> okay, that is some kind of shot, you know, and uh, it was it's been fun to watch all day. He's been working the trees and uh, those those rollers he threw early on the one to get out of trouble to save his birdie opportunity uh, over there on what was that uh, sixth and then he threw a roller on hole three to try that he got down the hill it just hooked a little bit on him uh, it's been really a good game these 14 and 16 uh, two very tough holes both should probably be par fives uh, so he would be bogey free I think if they were correctly marked, um, but uh, being that everybody plays the same hole and the same score, you gotta you gotta give it to him. He was holding strong as our bogey-free man, um, uh, but uh, hopefully he can finish up strong on 17 and 18. Uh, the whole card has really been playing well. Thomas has let things get away from him a little bit. But I think all three of the three of the guys, Gavin, Isaac, and uh, Eagle, have all played and put it very well today. He's saying for it to get down, just outside C one. I think on this hole, even though it's almost four hundred feet, uh, you do have to play up uh about 10 feet on the slope even though it looks like it goes down and up it's actually up in the end um the fairway is only 68 feet wide on this hole um and uh it's 30 feet out the back 54 on the left and 59 on the right as you're coming in on the green now babcock coming in with the forehand sticks oh. it that's exactly what you want to do on a 400 foot that hole, huh? Sick, Put it in the bullseye. I mean, that's what I've been seeing all day from Babcock. That power forehand is just massive. And coming out with pure hyzer too. You know, he, he missed the first putt on hole one. He took a bogey on hole seven. Other than that, he has scrambled well and putted well all day. Now Gilbert. Get up there. 38 footer for birdie awaits Gilbert. And now Eagle going backhand as well. Wow, still leaking it left. Yeah. You know, I th I think when you're throwing the disc that far, 400 feet, that you may come up with a little hesitation with that that hazard being, you know, so close behind. It's it's only 30 feet. That doesn't that seems like a pretty good size area, but when you're throwing it that far, a little too much flex, a little too much hyzer, it could leak out in wind up out of bounds so uh it just makes gavin's shot look that much more impressive now up to rozak sneaks it in on the weak side that's going to be a par rozak tied for ninth place two under not too shabby of a starting round the man worked hard out there he definitely did and a tough day on the disc golf course for alden that harris back nine that he never got anything started on the front really and then the back nine just kind of beat him up pretty good. Rough day out there. Maverick and now Wolf tied for second place. We might be seeing Jake Wolf on the lead card tomorrow. Yeah, a couple bogeys down the stretch for him too uh, that, that may have cost him just a little bit. Um, I don't know if he'll make the lead card. We got a lot of people tied for uh second so i'm not sure where the pdga numbers are going to fall on those 
Yeah, I believe it just depends on how Gavin and Isaac Robinson finish up these last two. Well, we know Gavin's going to probably pick one up here. It is a close putt, which has been his biggest struggle all day. I almost feel like if he was edge of circle one, we could just circle it for him. <laughs> And now Isaac to go to solo second place. He's a little farther out of the circle than I thought he was. Yep. Oh. Took a hop. Did it roll? Like it's outside. No, no, it's okay. That's okay. Looked like it flipped off the top there, maybe. It could have been a nasty reaction, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, with that slope of that hill right there. Now McMahon for birdie to extend the lead to three. Yeah. You know, he has taken two bogeys, but he's birdied right behind him. So he's still seven under. It probably would have looked a lot better if all those holes were par, but um, he's a colorful guy. He's a colorful guy, so might as well add a little color to the card. Oh my goodness, that's what I get for talking in his backswing. Well, that was the most timid putt we've seen from him all day. That was just right out of the hand. That that that's a tough one. Well, and there you go. So much for solving that problem, huh? <laughs> Isaac is now back to three. He's dropped off. Tied for sixth place now. Let's take another look at this. Just straight up short-armed it. Not sure if he... he do you see him look back there? Like maybe he got distracted or someone... Yeah, I don't know. It distracted him a little bit. Weird putt there, and that bogey's going to drop him off of second place. And Jim, we move into hole number 18. Walk us through. Hole 18 is 835 feet. It's par four. It plays 27 feet down. Uh, it's uh, 93 feet wide. Off to the left there where you see those big trees, there's a fence, that's out of bounds. Everything else in the tall grass is gonna be uh, the hazard like we've been playing. Uh, it's six, the green that we're gonna come up to here is 85 feet around. But it's the way they place the basket, it's 16 feet from the back corner. So that's gonna make a difference when you're trying to throw those long up shots how close you're really going to get um, and you do once you play down the hill the 25 feet when you go back up uh, you do get a little bit of a backstop because you're playing a little bit uphill you can see this is the uh, second card coming in uh, on that hole and uh, looks like most of them laid up low we might have one here on the green out on the left side there uh but it looks like most of them laid up short and are just going across for their par this is a a very good closing hole i kind of like the idea of the hazards on the sides and uh asking someone to make a big shot gives them an opportunity to go for a big uh, shot onto the green if they get far enough down there. Um, uh, otherwise, they're going to lay up short. Um, they can lay up short and have, you know, a hundred foot run at the basket uh, if they wanted to. But no, I don't think a lot of people will play it that way. I think once they're out of position, they're going to probably just play for the the par. This one looks pretty nice right here, though. Right in the middle. Yeah, from right in the middle. Yeah. There's a slope right there where he landed. If you go 10 feet farther, you're on a downhill slope. <clears throat> where he landed, pardon me, where he landed, he's going to have a, a pretty good shelf to throw off of. So it'll be interesting to see if he tries to go for the green. There's not much wind.
Ooh, that's hanging out there to the right quite a bit. Does that have enough to carry back? Oh, I think it looks does. Looks like it. That is oh, it smashed. does. Look at that. He's all the way. You see, Gavin landed up at the top of that slope. He's all the way to the bottom of it. He's. I think he's definitely going for the green. That was crushed. And Thomas doesn't like to get out driven. See if he's going to match. Uh oh. Come on, get left. Oh, did that run left? It did. Yeah, it's going to be a hazard stroke there for Thomas. Just sawed that one let's, off. Let's hope he's on the line. Definitely a possibility. Now, Isaac. A little flatter. And he's right there on the top of that rise right there. That's a that's a good position if you want to try to go for it. You got the elevation uh, to work with there. But we'll have to wait and see. What a picture. After of that. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful here. It's absolutely beautiful. We're up in that barn over there to the right right there where you see the... Yeah, they gave us really... Really nice spot here in their library above the brewery. And uh, it's it's really been the host. They're very good hosts, you know, very good hosts. Another drone overview of the gallery and the lead card walking down the fairway. Just a really gorgeous Really appreciate hole. all these fans coming out on a Friday. Didn't mean to interrupt there, buddy. I do want to talk about the length of this hole. I really love, just like you said, if you want to go for the birdie and you want an easy look at the birdie, you have to smash something off the tee. It has to be a huge tee shot, but a lot of the standard shots, you're left with a decision to make. Yeah, you really do have a choice. As you can see, Gavin coming down, you get a... You, if we can pan back just a little bit, I don't know if we can get the camera guy to pan back a little bit and see the green. You can see how they do have an opportunity to go for this green from where they got down to. All of them were pushing the envelope to get down low enough mm -hmm. to get to that shot. Um, I would not be surprised if uh, Thomas tries to throw one onto the green here to save his par. He's had a up and down game all day. It would really be nice to see him stick one in the circle on this one. Oh. Oh. Had the distance. Maybe I should get with him and we need to take him to dinner. He needs something good to eat tonight. That's for sure. But uh, that drop zone is going to be 108 feet. It plays from down there near those two posts. You see it to the left of Gavin down there. Uh, there's a, it's about 108 feet up to the basket from there to the drop zone. And here is one last look at the massive forehand that Babcock's been putting on display all day. He's been very accurate with this all day long. And he's, he's on the edge of the circle. That's a good play from there. I don't think he wanted to be too aggressive. I'm sure being the first round, he, he's, I don't, I don't Oh, maybe he is looking to see where he's at. <laughs> well, I think he'll be pleased. Yeah, two strokes off uh, at this point. Isaac coming in with good speed. Very that, nice. That's mid, mid circle one. That's a pretty sweet shot. You don't often see him miss two from that distance in a row. Uh, and here's Eagle using the range finder, making sure that the putter's going to be okay. No, he's going sidearm, so maybe overstable mid, do you think? Yeah, I think he's going to down tempo on this. He's been throwing more driver 
just kind of tucking the elbow in. I think he's just very scared of anything where the elbow has to come off the side. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That looked like a sharp edge disc for sure. The plunk. Nicely done. He could get back to a three, three stroke lead. Thank you. Which he was at uh, four holes ago. <laughs> and if you are enjoying the coverage this weekend here in Prince Edward Island, make sure to tune in to the action next week, it's the Disc Golf Pro Tour Playoffs brought to you by Barbasol, the MVP Open at Maple Hill, presented by OTB. This is one of the iconic courses in all of disc golf history. If you've not seen it yet on camera, highly recommend tuning into the Disc Golf Network and checking it out. It is beautiful and it's tense. This is one of the last big tournaments on the Disc Golf Pro Tour before the majors and the Tour Championship. Yeah, Brian, I actually think it's the last uh, one before the Tour Championship. And there are many people on the bubble in both male and female that are trying to work their way in. So it could be a very, very exciting event uh, to tune into. Oh, he almost threw that in. It would have been nice. Thomas just could not swing that big shot back in bounds. Up and down on the way. Yeah, pretty bland round for Gilbert. Even par going into 18. Unfortunate double bogey on the way. Yeah. But still, still in the mix. Now Babcock for a big birdie here to go to six under. Not going to fall for Babcock. He's going to remain at five under. Eagle McMahon putting for birdie. That was one of his few misses from the edge of the circle as well. And Isaac pushing himself back to four under, wanting to be in the mix. What a day it's been for Eagle McMahon. Eight under par starting effort. Well, that's that number I said between six and eight number, or six and eight. Most guys were going to be trying to look to get there. Um, Babcock almost made it, and uh, Eagle did. So um, it'll be an interesting weekend as we play out tomorrow. They're expecting more wind. Uh, somewhere between 13 and 20 miles an hour. So some of these shots are going to look a little different in the link style area. One, two, three, uh, 16, 17, 18. They're all going to look a little different tomorrow for sure. Well, quite a few players very grateful to have shot the rounds that they shot moving into tomorrow when the wind does pick up. But now the man to chase, Eagle McMahon, Eight under par and a log jam at four, Babcock at five. And we're going to bring it in here to the DGN booth, Brian Earhart and PDGA Hall of Famer, Jim Oates. Jim, we watched a great day out there on the course, but what a unique property Rose Valley is. Can you talk about what you noticed after its first day in competition? Well, I noticed that uh, it was up and down. I noticed that it had tough rough. I noticed that uh, the guys had to work hard uh, at their putting and their approaches, uh, which is everything we expected from the course. I think Ben did a terrific job in challenging these guys this week. Um, I would love to, I am looking forward to, I should say, for tomorrow and Sunday. Uh, I, 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 by no stretch of the imagination, looking at these scores, think that uh, this is settled at all. I mean, there, there's some really, 
really good shooting going on. I really liked what Gavin did with only one bogey today. Uh, that was fierce of him, especially after missing that first putt. He came right back with a birdie. Uh, fortunately, he missed that last one on the last hole, but he got he got two out of the last four. Those are tough holes coming down the stretch. He gave up nothing. Uh, so I look for him to continue to play well tomorrow. Isaac, I think, uh, I don't know if he got distracted on 17. He looked like he was going to finish that back nine without a bogey. It was a tough, tough little mishap right there, but he did come right back with the birdie. And uh, Jake Ma uh, Mon also played fabulous. He needs to get some ice on those that elbow and that shoulder and that knee and come back tomorrow and throw some nice hook thumbers for us again. Uh, really enjoyed watching that guy play. Uh, this The greens kind of lend themselves to his bouncy landings uh, with all the shrubs and all the stuff on the ground. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to tomorrow. Not sure what our top card is. Uh, I think that's what our top uh, – we'll get uh, – anyway – yeah, loved it today. <laughs> loved having you finally come on with me today, Brian. Uh, it was a little sweaty in the very beginning, but uh, uh, enjoyed my first time here and really enjoyed. And thank you all for, for having me for this weekend. I really enjoyed it. Well, Jim, we have two more fantastic rounds. But before we go for the day, we're going to take one more commercial break on the other side. OTB shot of the day. We'll see you soon. What makes the Halal Guys so deliciously different? You might have heard of our famously long cart lines and NYC fans happily stand in. Today, with over 100 plus restaurants across the globe, we are your place to experience authentic American Halal. Enjoy our delicious falafel, Euro sandwich, platters, and sides topped with our famously flavorful white and hot sauces. Order online today and taste how we make different so delicious. The Halal Guys, bringing something deliciously different to the table. We are the Disc Golf Pro Tour. We exist not just in the throws and the putts, but in the hearts of those who make it possible. We are a story. Behind every disc thrown, there is a team. 
Professionals bound by respect, care, and a shared passion. We work tirelessly to create disc golf's grandest stages at the world's premier venues. Together with volunteers and fans, we form a community that not only shares the love of disc golf, but enriches lives beyond the game. It's our goal to continually evolve professional rules, benchmarks, and experiences to ensure the highest level of play. Every competition and every throw is an invitation to a world-class experience. This is who we are. This is our story. Yeah. Welcome to the Disc Golf Pro Tour. And welcome back, everybody. Eagle McMahon, your leader, eight under par total. Gavin Babcock at five under par. Looking down the leaderboard, just showing you how deep the field is going and how, mu how much teeth this course here at Rose Valley truly has. And let's bring it into the DGN booth. OTB shot of the daytime. Again, Brian Earhart and Jim Oates. There's so many highlights that we can choose from. I'm just going to, my guess is that it's got to be something from Jake Wolf. Give me some sort of slider down the middle. Jim, what do you think? What's uh, something specific? Well, I'd love to see that young lady's ace again, but <laughs> since we're doing an MPO, I'm pretty sure I'm going to guess McMahon, hole eight, over that tree branch, sweet putt. That was a turning point in the round. Just what his group thought he, they were all going to get him on a birdie. Mm -hmm. He comes out of the woods with a birdie. Well, let's see if Jim has the crystal ball rolling. Let's take a look. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the dumbest par save of his life, he says. Oh, uh, you know what? That. That is a good par save though. And that was a momentum changer for him because that easily would have set him back. Uh, and look, that was a big, big putt. And he took that momentum and carried it through the rest of the round and only had the one bogey. And that was pretty sweet. Gavin Babcock, now solo second place, chasing down Eagle McMahon. We have two rounds remaining here at Prince Edward Island, Rose Valley Disc Golf. Make sure to tune in. We have FPO action tomorrow morning. Myself and Nate Perkins, make sure to tune in before the MPO action. 10 a.m. Atlantic time, 9 a.m. Eastern time. Make sure to tune in on the Disc Golf Network. For Brian hey, Earhart, Brian, Jim Oates. What, what time are we going tomorrow, Brian? What 10 time? 10 a.m. Atlantic, 9 a.m. Eastern, Jim. And then in the afternoon, 2.30 Atlantic, 1.30 oh, Eastern time. Okay. I'll let's... set my alarm. Here we okay, go. Okay, buddy. For Brian Earhart, Jim Oates, we'll see you next time, folks.